seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live. Uh, we're so happy that you guys join us, that we uh, have four episodes left. I think so, yeah. Today's 17 or 16? What? Uh, Tim? Yes? What did you eat for breakfast? Wheaties? <laughs> I don't think you did. What? Did you have shrimp? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> like seriously, look look at the monitor. I don't see what you're seeing. You're knee high to a grasshopper right now. Well, that's fairly normal. <laughs> I mean, an actual grasshopper. Oh wow! Not, not the ones at the museum that I th- are. I thought you agreed we weren't going to beat down Tim this episode. That was last I, episode. I'm hoping to grow you up this episode. Oh, how are you even going to reach the vice? Well, what about yourself? What are you talking about? Well, I can see what you mean about you, not me. Wow. This is a whole different world down here. What did you do to the program? I, I told you. I, I told didn't you touch to it. buy new batteries and get some more memory cards today. Well, all I did is press start. That start button? <laughs> yeah, that start button. That's shrink. Oh. Not start. Well. Quite simply, here we are now, stuck in this. I, Look at your chicken I, legs. Yeah. Well, apparently, Look at those I'm going to be fine because I just have to jump up on the keyboard uh, and hit ow. some buttons, but how are you going to tie the flies? I don't know. This is, this is so strange. I guess, do you have a better zoom? Because we're going to need it. No, but like, how do you get up to the vice? I guess, you bring any rope? Quite literally, yeah, probably. That's the thread. That's only 140. And you could probably climb a mountain with that right now. I don't know, but we'll try to get this figured out. This is weird. Probably going to just go to commercial if I can figure out how to get up on the keyboard there. And we'll be hopefully back to normal size when you guys come back after commercial. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well-organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. Well, you're back to normal (laughs) size and uh, (laughs) finally, boys, we actually (laughs) and girls and everyone else who's tuned in. We actually ate our Wheaties and grew Grew, very quickly. (laughs) Well, we hoped you liked our is it called satirical comedy or or uh, just funny? Whatever it is, it's not a sitcom. (laughs) Maybe it is the situational comedy. Uh, but either way, we're just trying to be a little bit of light and a little bit of positivity and fun in this, uh, fantastic square world that we live in. (laughs) It's the square world, the box we live in. Whoa, Timmy Tim. So yeah, let us know. How's our audio? Can you guys hear us? Or yeah. not, or are we still on mute and something very like tiny that? To your so. eyes. Yeah, uh, Dana has more hair, so we're not <laughs> sure where the questions <laughs> or comments. But, anyways, uh, welcome. Actually, welcome yes. to Thursday Night Live episode, season three, episode seventeen. 17. <laughs> it's, a sad, it's almost sad. Yeah. Well, it well sad, actually. it's sad, but it's uh, fantastic because. That means that we've enjoyed 16 nights plus two plus one, <laughs> 19 nights already with already. you fantastic humans. Yeah. Only quality people. Only OQP. Quality people. OQP. 
That's true. Uh, yeah, and so I'm I'm Dana Lattery. I'm normally this size, and I normally don't fit on my desk. But Tim, <laughs> 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 knee good. high to a grasshopper, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's yes. Thursday. Let us know, Thursday. folks, uh, what you're drinking, where you're from. Is it your first time tuning in? Uh, and if it is, welcome to yep. have you for the journey of what we got left for four episodes in season three. Yep. Let yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Ooh, lots of people coming. Yeah. Good, Gotta good folks. So, yeah, guys, if you're happy to be here, uh, give the old hearts on uh, on the post and share it with your friends, uh, because you never know whose grandma needs to see this show tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a couple patterns that we're going to tie the quill gordon and is it the sparkle pupa yep. or sparkle pupa la fontaine's sparkle pupa no that la fontaine's is next week that's a sparkle this merger is, difference this we don't even know just, what we're tying leave folks. this up to the, the fly guy okay okay no this is not tim yeah, it is tim why don't Trust you me. tell the fine folks at home what, what Thursday Night Live is all about <laughs> and and then you can Absolutely. tell them what you're going to tie cuz I'm not I'm tying tie. anything for sure, guys. So, what is Thursday Night Live? Well, Thursday Night Live is, uh, well, it's a good time is what it is. We have a great community of people that are join us online. Originally, we weren't online. Uh, we were actually meeting in a brewery every week, and things have changed as, as COVID entered all of our lives. Uh, we pivoted a bit, and now we're in studio. So, the show has grown a lot. It's in, uh, I think, a much better place overall anyways. Um, but each night, what we do is we tie up two different patterns. Uh, so tonight we're doing the Quill Gordon and the Sparkle Pupa, if he doesn't want to call it La Fontaine's. And uh, so what we do is we do these two patterns. And if you were lucky enough to get in on the, the seasons that we sold starting this season, um, you have a package that looks something like this. If I can get it to focus, I don't want to. Just so you can see what the La Fontaine Sparkle Emerger looks like. Now look at the Pupa. Go I know, but that's the go sparkle you. emerger, and that's next week, folks. So go, go Google the pupa. I'm telling I just, you. I just did. I just did. Yeah, and it looks like I we're just kind. did. Well, this is the pupa. <laughs> that's the pupa. Next week is the sparkle emerger. Oh, okay. Well, double caddis whammy. Double caddis whammy. Anyways, carry, carry guys, on. These kits. So what you got in them? Uh, you have each of those patterns that we're tying tonight. You've already got them tied for you once each, and then you have enough materials to tie roughly the same fly again two times. So. Um, when we when we're done the show this automatically gets cached on YouTube so you can go to YouTube and actually tune in there and maybe that's a better speed for you to, to tie if we're going maybe a little too fast here um, but again that's all in feedback so let us know if we do move too fast just slow us down give us the SOS in the comments and we'll uh, we'll let you catch up but that's what you got in each kit so each Thursday we're doing these two flies it's not just fly time that's kind of just gives us an excuse to show up and be here um, it's more of a, a hangout and uh, converse with each other and it's great for us to check in with you guys and see what you guys have been up to for the last week um, and we can all keep our sanity a little bit yeah yeah I don't know why I keep saying yeah yeah because your right. voice was so high a minute ago you have yeah to. <laughs> I brought it I, the old uh, organs dropped okay the there organs, it is the I organs. just couldn't find out how to bring me back into the scene yeah. Now you're back. So anyways, folks, uh, yeah, let's start saying hi to some of you guys. Mr. Mark Hull comes back because he was Is originally he at baseball a baseball play. game. What? Humans at sporting <laughs> events? How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> yeah. All right, Victor Edmonds, Dylan Dooch. We FaceTime today, Dooch. and Dooch is super excited to get his shirt and his sticker. Well, Mr. Riley, what's excited. up? What's up? Uh, Mark, I got to meet Mark last Saturday at the uh, Rebel Pub Night. Oh, nice. And that was super cool, Mark. Great to meet you, and thank yeah. you for the beer. I appreciated that. Um, did you all think Dana uses a beard crimper? <laughs> That's all natural, I think. That's all natural. That is flow, folks. We, it's, not, it's not flow up here. It's flow down <laughs> here. So, um, yeah, so uh, Sin with the Grin said that's even better than the shower opening oh, well, yeah, well. <laughs> did you get the private viewing <laughs> or did you just mean the house code oh, in the man. shower cap so yes hopefully that's what uh, he means. yeah mark davis what's happening terry sather hey, been terry. waiting a week we have been waiting Us all week too. for this too Us too. ah yes no blend 17 hey babe that's hey, my babe talking to me but folks what is super cool about right now is the fact that we got something for you guys called, hold tight. Hold it. 
<laughs> yeah, Mr. Bailu. Oh, Bailu yes. Belond, it's your birthday, brother. So let's just sing happy birthday. Yeah. We're not playing all the graphics because Jim James William Crawford. Yeah, Mr. Belant, we're so happy to spend your birthday here with us and the TNL fam. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So make sure you guys reach out to Bilo and wish him a happy birthday. From all of us at Fly Vision Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live, the TNL fam says, happy birthday. All right. So that's not the fancy graphics that <laughs> Jim Crawford got last week, but uh, or two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, it was that 80s night. Yeah, it was 80s I night. I think yeah, everything yeah. about everything we were <laughs> overload for the internet. It, yeah, things the, were a little the bit. The cool overnight. factor was so cool. It was high, high, high. How do I fix this? I know, like this. Oh, there you okay. go. Okay, easy enough, and I don't crimp my beard yet, so. Happy birthday, brother. Maybe and could we request that? Could we see a crimped beard? Day? That would have worked for 80s night, it but... Would. I think it could work anytime. For now, that's the way it goes. <laughs> okay, so you guys are all itching to find out what is on the baking cam. Well, let's check it out, folks. Ooh, it's worth checking out. Yeah, yeah, that, folks, is a multitude of flavors. And we're going to start with the bottom. Inside that cupcake holder is a red velvet Ooh. cupcake. Cupcake. Okay, and then on top is some awesomeness <laughs> called <laughs> frosting. <laughs> frosting, but there's another, there's a better word for frosting, and uh, and then on top of that is Oreo crumbles, Ooh. and quite essentially, I made this for Bilo's birthday. <laughs> That's not true. That's true, Tim. I'm gonna it. turn <laughs> off your microphone. So. Uh. If that's not true, oh, man. tonight is not the LaFontaine. <laughs> <laughs> we, what a good tying oh, show. Man. We, just, Great tie we show. don't even know what we're tying. No. We're just going to tie. It's a bug. Yeah. So that's the baking cam, folks. And uh, if that's like last week, we had to go to water. It was Diet Thursday. Yeah. So uh, yeah, now we're back. Is the buttercream. That's the word. Oh. See? White. Yep. Would you say white frosting? That's what I would say. Yeah, see, buttercream is totally different and much better, but <laughs> it actually might not be totally different. It's just better. It just so better. that's yes. going to go down the hatch tonight, folks, after the show. What am I drinking, you might ask? Well, mm. a shameless plug for our friends. They're not even our friends. We don't know them. They could uh, be our friends. But Far Brewery in Turner Valley, Alberta, literally one of the greatest breweries there. Yeah. This Weizenbach, Tim went down there last week. And I said, this this is the kind of friend he is. I said, hey, Tim, when you hop into FAR, can you grab me some uh, Weizenbach? And he, or no, I didn't say that. I lied. I said, or he goes, I'm going to pick up some Pilsner. I said, well, why don't you grab some Weizenbach? And he goes, I don't like Weizenbach. <laughs> That's right. I forgot this conversation. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, seriously. I am blonde, okay? That's orange, oh. okay? So that's what Tim thinks of me when he goes out to do things. But there I am, probably looking for uh, ciders wherever I go because I know that's what Tim Tim drinks. Really? But tonight. When was the last time you bought me a cider? I, oh, I'll never have actually. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I, I look. I didn't say I bought you one. I said I look oh, to you buy look. you one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And if they have them, I tell you, hey, you should go check out that place. Oh, that's a fantastic beer. Yes, that's do cake it for face. Me. Hold, hold behind. You can't, you can't. <laughs> Trying to create enough. There it is. There. Uh, okay, you okay. literally went like this, went and then you went yeah. like this. You're like. <laughs> oh, and he yeah. said he was blonde, folks. That is I a told fact. You. So, uh, John Warsfold's in the house. Apparently, somebody just said hi to him. Uh, Sammy Superstar is checking us out from What's the that, YouTube. Sammy? So, what's up, Sammy? I was staring at your shirt um, this morning. I was thinking, you know what? I almost wore it too. I almost wore it today. Super cool. Uh, Mark just dropped 300 beads on the hardwood floor. Sounded like a rain stick. Mm. And I bet you that was, and now you're hypnotized. So yeah. Mark will not be joining us tonight, <laughs> folks. Don't worry. He's not he going to win your bingo tonight. <laughs> yes. Tim does not have a ride tonight, folks. That no. is that is. We got big plans tomorrow. Yes. So. We got big yeah. plans tomorrow. Got to hit the river, so I got to get get home and grab the mini the mini or me 
Oh yeah, the Minier Me. Yep. Okay, so I do love that beer. I love you guys, mm-hmm. but what I love most is beer and you guys <laughs> and and Tim <laughs> and Tim. <laughs> oh, even I set you up yeah. for that one. Nothing. I know, I know, I fell through. Mm-hmm. So tonight, what are we gonna do? We're gonna play bingo. So if you don't have your bingo cards, um, you should get one. Where yeah, they get one? where are they at? Bingo cards right here, folks. Uh, flyfishingbowriver.com slash Thursday Night Live. Make sure you get your bingo cards because we got some giveaways tonight. I had a video lined up for you guys and it failed to load before the show started. So I said, yeah, about that. Um, I, just don't think- sh- I just got to show you something here. What does that look like to you? Yeah, that's the pupa. That's the, the La Fontaine deep sparkle, sparkle pupa. pupa. And I told you uh-huh. next week is the uh-huh. emerger. I think that's what we're tying this today. Nope. See, guys, oh. I'm going to cut oh, Tim I off. Saw it. I saw it. Here, it Tim, is. I don't think we can see it. Try that again, Tim. <laughs> Tim, people can't see what you're oh, trying you, to show you them. You think I'm not worried about getting close to you? Because I'll do it. Tim, <laughs> Tim, what? <laughs> Tim, where? <laughs> Hey, Tim, go back to your seat. (laughs) The camera's on you now. Uh, Okay, folks, let's get tying. So, Tim, why don't you tell them what we're going to tie first and what thread they should throw Throw on there. I've seen in the comments there are some people pretty excited to see uh, my version of the Quill Gordon. So I think we're going to start off with that one. Um, It's actually, I was telling Dana before the show, I I don't love tying this fly. This one's a... It's got some pretty interesting things to learn, but I'm gonna take you through it the best I can, um, and we'll kind of go from there. What thread we're gonna use, um, for this one, you're gonna wanna use a a lighter color of probably a 70 denier or an 8 aught. Tonight I'm gonna use a a tan colored uh, uh, UTC in 70. Excuse me. Um, And then for the next fly, I'm gonna use basically the exact same thread, but in black. And uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll start off on this one. So if you're, if you have your kits from us, go ahead and pull out from the inside. Be careful again when you open these suckers because there are hooks in there and they'd like to act like Mark's beads and end up on the floor Bounce. where you can't find them. So just be careful when you're opening it up. And inside you've got two separate packages. This guy here um, with the peacock curl in it. This is going to be our, um, that's going to be our Quill Gordon. And then we'll, our other one is going to be our, uh, Sparkle pupa. And I like to empty that bag out, make sure I got all those hooks before I do anything else so I don't make a mistake and lose some. So <clears throat> if we go ahead and we open up that that package, so I'll talk you through the materials that we're going to use. So if you are just tying from your own materials at home and need to go grab them, um, you can go ahead and do that. So we're going to start off this fly um, with a size 14 standard dry fly hook. We're going to use a stripped peacock quill. So if you've got a an eye, that's what uh, I'll sh- kind of show you why that's the best place to grab your, your peacock curl from. Um, you're going to need a semi substantial sized, um, kind of from the side of a, of a big cape. We're looking for longer fibers with not a lot of webs. This one's not crazy good, but it, it'll do for tail fibers. Um, what we're using for the wings is we're going to use a mallard flank. Um, I'm just going to do this. The, this, the uh, original pattern calls for a. Um, a lemon ginger dyed wood duck. What we're gonna use tonight, what we provided for you is this is this uh, color of uh, mallard flank. And these ones I'm actually gonna tie off tonight are, are ducks we actually shot this year, which is kind of always fun to use some of your own materials. Um, but what we're looking for, if you're looking in your kit, you wanna get a uh, nice- And, and by we, you didn't mean you. Uh, you know, <laughs> you I've, watched I meant, them get shot. I watched uh, these ducks fall from the air when I shot, although I doubt that any of my BBs <laughs> made contact. It's a good point. Um, so when we're looking at a feather like this, guys, if you're going to go pick one out of your bag, uh, just make sure that those those tips are really as even as they can be up top. That's how you know you got a good feather. We'll talk more about that shortly. Um, and then for, for a hackle, we're just using the original pattern calls for done. So what is done? That's an interesting word. Well, done just really means gray. That's that's the color that, that we're working off of. So I'm going to use the gray tail fibers as well as the gray hackle. And we're going to look to have uh, the hackle be just a little oversized for this um, orig- or this pattern. Originally, just, just hold on one sec. Sin with a grin. If you picked up your kit from the brewery, Tim, show them where the hooks are in the bag. Cause yeah. They're... So if you look at these bags right here, guys, um, this is the back side where it's actually... Here, I'll show you. I'll put my finger here so you can see. This is what you can see through. Okay, so my finger's gone into there. 
Now down in this little crevice here, it's these bags are actually designed to stand up. So if I were to take this, I'll show you, I'll show you here for a second. Trevor Montgomery, what's up, brother? On the bottom of these bags, you can see that actually splits open. So if you don't pop that open, because this bag is designed to stand like that, um, those hooks get jammed down in that little yeah. crease on the back side, and you can't see them. So just just be careful. That's yeah. I guarantee that's so, where they are. Sometimes you lose them when you open them, but sometimes they're also stuck in the bottom. Bad design. We'll get it better. Not saying there isn't the possibility that we didn't screw yeah. up, but that's what I found. Most yeah, of the time. but check down low in the bag because that's a lot of people have found them. So yeah, uh, Roman Quintana, man, he's been missing. He's been having a cuff, rough couple weeks. So we're here for you, brother. You're in the right space. Yeah, buddy. To get some life put back into you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> So, like I said, for this pattern here, guys, uh, we're gonna tie it as, as close to the original as we can. We have altered the material slightly, um, but for the most part, we're, we're gonna stick with the original pattern. Now, now what is this pattern? Um, this pattern is meant to be a mayfly imitation. Originally, it was tied in what's called Catskill style tying. Now, what's Catskill? I really don't, I'm not well versed the in Catskills. it. The that's Catskills, a, that's a river. Is that a, a yeah. river? Okay, so the, what I've noticed most in tying in that style, I don't really follow it super closely, but normally when they finish off a fly, it's tied a lot farther back um, from the eye itself. It's just a style of tying. I'm gonna take you through how I like to tie it, um, and, but we'll, we will be very close to the, kind of the original style of tying it. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and get our hook placed in the vise. So like I said, we are tying this on a size 14. Standard dry fly hook, which I'm struggling yeah, to pick up. Yes, it's a river in New York State. I river think it's the Catskills Mountains, I believe. Okay, cool. Correct well, me that... if I'm wrong, our eastern brothers and sisters. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get our, our hook in our vise here. We'll get it locked in really good. Welcome, everybody who's fallen in late. Yeah. We are glad to have you. I think one of the reasons I don't like tying this pattern a ton is because normally you're tying these in smaller sizes. If you bump this up a size, the skills are maybe a little easier to learn. So if you're at home and you are and you wanna do this, maybe tie it in a, in a larger size first and then move to this, but um, the techniques are, are pretty transferable through a lot of patterns we tie. Um, but what this is, is this is imitating a mayfly. Okay, so uh, a light colored mayfly could go marked brown if it was a little bigger, being the darker quill. Um, it, it really could could go to a lot of different things as far as a, a bit of a searching pattern. Um, I'm not going to say it's specific for any mayfly. Uh, it's kind of more general. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in behind here. We're going to start our thread a little ways back from the eye. Break off our tag. And we're going to keep taking that thread rearward. I just like to lay a little base down to the edge of the bend. And then I'm going to come back up here. Don't worry about laying um, on this fly. The bulk of the fly is actually created by the thread and by the wing that we tie in. And we want some bulk. You can tie it super thin, which um, for instance, this guy is a little bit bulkier version. So you see the body's a little bit bulkier uh, versus let's say this guy where the material or where the body's a little bit thinner. I personally like a little bit bulkier, bulkier body. So how we're going to achieve that is we're actually going to need to put thread down. So don't worry about overdoing it with the thread to start with here. Okay, now you're gonna go in and you're gonna grab that, um, that tailing fiber that we're gonna use. Now, I'll just show you a, a cape here real quick. This is, a, this is a whiting dry fly hackle cape. This is just a half cape. So if you're looking at this here, if we wanted to find, like where would we find good tailing fibers? Normally, if you go to the outside of your cape and you lift up, you're gonna find these broader, um, these broader feathers that lie underneath here. You're gonna pull, pull those guys out, and that's most likely gonna be, and that's actually the one I'm holding. These two are great. Not very webby at the bottom. Pretty much you can see clear feathers all the way down, like that. So when you don't see that webbing in the middle, you know it's a it's a good uh, tailing fiber. So that's kind of where where I for this specific one where I've grabbed it from a dun cape instead of this one here's a cream color. But don't worry if you don't have actual dun color, um, you could easily do this with a lighter colored cream for both the tail and the dry fly hackle and you're not changing anything crazy about the pattern. We just went with this to stay as close as possible as possible to the original. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to my um, this tailing fiber. I'm gonna get some of these ones that are all crooked out of the way so I can get a better stack here. Um, now I pull those fibers up. 
Okay, so I get a good look at them. Now I want to come in here and I want to grab... For me, what I'm going to do with my right hand for you would be your left because if you're if you're left-handed, you want to you want to be grabbing it with your right and, and vice versa. But I want to come in and try to grab roughly eight to ten fibers. I'm going to grab a couple more. And I like to pull them off parallel to the actual stem because then I line them up so when I tear them off, all the butts are together and also the tip should be aligned. Okay, that's... So pulling them uh, parallel together before you remove them from the stem is gonna be the way to go. Now we want this tail to be roughly the overall length of the hook shank itself from the eye to the bend. We're gonna transfer that back and tie it in. So I, I mark it by holding it like so with these fingers, I'm gonna switch hands and then I'm gonna tie it in. So I know that I need, um, right where the, my fingers end, I want that at the back of the bend. So I'll advance my thread forward a bit just so that I can grab the butts. Whoop. So I'm gonna, I need to cord up my thread because it was all spread out. So I'm gonna cord it up a bit and I just did a clockwise spin, do a gathering wrap. And then I wanna keep that tailing fiber right up on top of the hook as I go back to the edge of the bend. And if it didn't stack very well, I accidentally pushed some over to the other side and I just back off a few wraps and I'll relay it down. So it's really important that we keep this right up on top of the hook and if we if we let it slip over the other side then it's going to kind of put a crook into those tailing fibers okay and we don't want to go too far down if we get into the bend itself then that's going to cause those um those those tail fibers to actually tip over and then point down instead of up which we don't want either where's the nail polish not tonight folks that still, is still got little bits of remnants on these nails scrub uh, them yellow. to get them off just couldn't do it Okay, so there's our tail fibers. Um, next thing I like to do here is we're gonna prep our, um, our quill. So let's talk about quills a little bit and we have talked about them in the past and one of the major flaws of this material, although it has very uh, a ton of really great uses, it's very fragile. Um, when you're picking a, uh, one of these uh, pieces off of the stem, one of the fibers, to create your quill, um, body, you really want to find the, the strongest, the thickest, the best colored um, stem piece. So what, what I do is you want to go to, if you've got one, we've already provided for you guys what you need to use, but if I go, if I have it here, I'm going to grab an eye from a, from a peacock feather. Now below the eye, when the eye stops and you, you basically get out of the blue, the first dozen or so pieces below that the dozen quills that are just below that are going to be not only your strongest, they're going to be the, the flattest, thickest, and the best color, which are all really important um, in choosing what we want to use for this fly. So I'm going to come in here. <clears throat> I'm just going to grab one of these guys off. Now, obviously, that's not. we don't want to wrap it looking like that. So, so what are we going to do? Well, we need to strip it. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can chemically do it to an entire eye. You can do it, um, you can, like, put it in an eraser so put it laid on a flat piece of paper take an eraser and scrub down it that's actually a really effective way to get off I don't have one of those with me or you can just kind of rough it <clears throat> and do it with your fingernails so what I like to do is this is the, the the tip of the stem up here this is very fragile it probably will break a couple times in this process and then as I come down I'm just gonna grab and I'm gonna start dragging my fingernails back off it's gonna stand up it's gonna stand up all those fibers and start to strip them off you can do it over a garbage bin or whatever if, you, if you're worried about the garbage. But as I go, I just want to keep stripping. And I'm going to strip all of those little tiny fuzzy fibers off the stem. Okay? It can take a little bit to do. And I don't really have much for nails, so it uh, <laughs> makes it a little tougher. If you've got nails, it's, it's a lot easier. Some people kind of drag them over top of the edge of a... Um, over top of the edge of uh, like a pair of scissors or a razor blade, and it kind of does the same thing. But once you get it down, and you get every little last one off, it should look something like that, okay? And if you got just a few tiny, you can see a couple of just a little tiny shimmers on there, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's hard to get every little tiny piece off, but roughly- Brent Struthers' son is having have. a birthday, so- uh, Brent, awesome. Send our happy birthday wishes, buddy, and you have yourself a fantastic night. Mm -hmm. Pencil eraser can be used yep. to do that too. 
Yeah. Like I said, if you put it down on a piece of paper and use the pencil eraser moving back against yeah. the grain, it can really, really work well. Will your teeth work? Well, Mike, there's one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, I encourage you to try all methods. <laughs> Stick it in your teeth and let us know. <laughs> yeah. So once we've got this uh, completely trimmed, or sorry, raked off, however you want to call it, um, we don't need the whole stem. Like this is a long stem. We don't need this whole thing. What we do need is roughly three times if you were to measure it off of um, your hook, basically three times the length of your overall hook. And now it's really hard to see and get super geeky on this, but one side of this is gonna be a little darker than the other. And when we tie it in, we wanna tie that dark side against the hook, because that's gonna mean that when we turn and start wrapping it, that's the side that's gonna be shown. Um, and one of the edges or the other should have a darker, a darker line on it. Pick that one to tie in. Um, why I said to measure it is because the, as you go down the stem, the thicker the stem gets. And we want to use that more than we want to use the thin side. So I like to roughly measure three or four times the length. So one, two, three. And I'm going to take my scissors and actually snip that off. So I'm not going to use that super thin part up there. I'm going to start using it right here. Okay. So now I've picked the side that I want to tie down. I'm going to bring my thread back and I'm going to tie it in basically just ahead of the tail fiber and then I'll work my thread backwards just to secure it all the way right to the edge of the bend and I'm going to lay some thread wraps forward as I go. Now I want to leave <clears throat> about a third, I want to come back about a quarter, sorry, of the way or a couple of hook eye lengths behind the eye itself and I'm going to leave my thread right, right about there and that's where I'm going to tie in my wing. So our wing, like I said, we're using this uh, mallard flank tonight. I'm going to take all the fluffies off the bottom. Fluffies, is that technical term? Uh, or... I believe it is as technical oh, as it gets. Yeah. Fluffies. Yeah, fluffies. You know what I'm saying. No, I don't, Tim. Please tell us. <laughs> fluffy. So fluffy. I could die. <laughs> so I'm going to, what I do is I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to draw them back down the feather so I can get all those tips to align. And I can see that that's what I'm gonna get. Those tips look super even, I really like that. Um, that's really what I'm looking for, is good markings, as well as it really coming to even tips. And now I'm gonna take that in my fingers, I'm gonna spin it so that the, kind of the curve, it looks like it's gonna curve up. I want that to naturally point up. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure the wing and I'm gonna tie it in like so. Okay, so what I need is for a, a length of the wing. Well, I need it to be from where I tie it in, so I'm gonna measure off the back of the bend to the front of the eye. I want it to be basically exactly a hook length in height when I tie it in. So if I measure off the back bend to the front, that's perfect. As you see it right there, I'm at the back of the bend all the way to the eye is in line with that. That's what I'm gonna take and I'm gonna tie it in. Okay, and I'm just gonna transfer that forward to where my thread is sitting. I'm gonna tie it in. I like if these wings even end up a little taller than they should. Um, I like the look of the fly. I like that the wings stand out because on a mayfly they do. So I'm gonna tie that in there. The take floofers. Some, take some thread wraps down. And I like to right away take and Okay, bend hold that on. Back. Bruce just took his waders off. Took your waders Not off. Not everybody ties in there. I get it. I get what he was doing is he doesn't like to take bathroom breaks. <laughs> so he ties in his waders and uh, urinates in his waders yeah. and then after the show dumps, dumps them. <laughs> but it's called uh, he's already theater, full theater buddy, isn't it? The theater buddy. Yeah, it's a, a surface over the uh, genital area type catheter that you can just strap it to your leg and go. Well, pretty much that. <laughs> I don't. I mean, you obviously weren't <laughs> aging Bruce by any means, no, were no. you? I mean, he could. Yeah. He, you can wear them at eighteen or mm -hmm. or older. Yeah. Where's where's uh. Jim James William Crawford. You can't ditch us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we call him the show wrecker. The show wrecker. So what I do there, guys, once I've tied that in, is I like take my thumb and push it back, and it gives me a good idea of the height of that wing. And honestly, I really like where that is. It might I, be a little I do overdone. Too. I you would like do it, too? it. Yep. Yeah? Okay, do it. Good. That's how you do would tie it. it? Yep. Okay, perfect. Do perfect, it. Perfect, perfect. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Probably get so, banned from Facebook for saying that. <laughs> I'm gonna come in here, guys, and I'm gonna cut it a bit of an angle. And I wanna leave a little bit of a butt as that's going back. It's like a ramp into the tail. And then we're gonna create a little bit of bulk there. And that's gonna be that bulk I was referring to as the 
um, the body. So I'm going to start taking touching thread wraps back, securing that down. It's a good point, Ryan. has. I don't know if you heard about it, but he uh, requested that Bruce does not take off too much or this will turn into the House of Commons. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear about it. Yeah, the guy was on a House of Commons Zoom call. Oh, and he thought I his did. camera yes, was off and he got naked. Bad. Wasn't he doing other bad things? That was the guy last year. Yeah, that was, that's yeah, not good. He was... I feel like just don't take your clothes off around your camera <laughs> yeah, just, in general. <laughs> just, <laughs> or just this, leave them on. I mean, is I this thing still on? Or don't wear your house coat <laughs> and your shower cap. <laughs> so if you guys are just tuning in, here's what we're going to do. Because I thought it was really funny and put a lot of work into it. Uh, for the halftime show, because the video I had didn't load, what we're going to do is show the intro again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because a lot of guys are just t jumping in, like Eric and Bruce and, and Roman and guys like that. So, uh, yeah, folks, you don't, you got to, I love it. I thought it was funny. So we'll I, show I, it again. It was even more fun yeah. making it. Yeah, it and was. there's more good stuff to come. There is more. <laughs> <laughs> I will just say, something that was filmed today... You may not be oh, able yeah. to unsee. Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, Matt, no, I have not checked out the new McKinnon's Flats uh, yet, but tomorrow... Tomorrow it is, yeah. I will be riding the... What did you name your boat? The Lime? No. The Whistle Dog so. Express. The Whistle Dog. <laughs> the Whistle Dog Express. Uh, John, now that you're talking about stripper fishing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did open the road, folks. Yeah, it was open it's today awesome. at noon. So Carry on, is Tim. It, Sorry to interrupt your that's show. Good question is it paved oh yeah no i don't know <laughs> oh yeah i jumped to that hopefully one. it doesn't matter does doesn't the intro matter. include rosina well oh. it's not actually bruce the intro it's the intro part b and there's a new rosina coming <laughs> <laughs> like i said you won't be able to unsee this yeah Rosina. but you won't see tonight folks but that will keep you coming back also i can't wait to show you guys what our friends at rocky mountain fly shop donated yes. okay for the final Episode 20, donation giveaway. Oh, man. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's get through this fly, and then we'll get back to that good stuff. So I'm, I'm now building that underbody. So I need it to be nice and tapered because that quill um, needs something to sit on, right, as you go up, and you need it to really keep a good contour. So I'm going to just build up a little bit of a taper there. And however much bulk you want on your body, this is where you decide it. Okay, now I'm gonna move my thread forward now that I'm happy with that. And this is probably the most finicky part of this and actually we did it, was it was it last week we did the a wing style the same way? I'm not sure, I think it was I, last yeah. week. Yeah, Tim, I don't even know. I don't even know. even know if we're tying right now. Are you just, tying a fly right yes, now? I'm trying. <laughs> I got seven billion other things going. <laughs> Terry Sather, guest number seven. Terry wins, folks. It's Terry wins and that's it, that's a wrap. $5,000 in giveaways and <laughs> yeah. you're going to Sylvan Lake, Alberta. <laughs> yeah, so. I take this here, I'm gonna try to keep my other fingers out of the way, and I'm gonna pull it back so you can get a good look at my fingernails. And then I'm gonna drive some um, wedge wraps right up underneath there. And that should assist us in getting that wing to stand up. Not a lot, it didn't do much. <laughs> it should. So you can start kind of creeping some of your thread wraps back against the wing. Uh, Nathaniel, you, you won the cupcake. That's a fact. Ooh. Cupcake. You come up to Olds within the next month, this cupcake yeah. is yours. No, it's not. If you're not here in the next roughly hour, it's gone. Yeah, it's probably going to be gone, Olds. <laughs> All right. So I've got that standing up a bit. And as you know, I like to not cheat, but I like to kind of change my methods of how I do this. Um, I am going to use some resin tonight to assist me with these wings um, because I think it's an easy way to teach it. And it's it can be tough doing a ton with your thread instead. But we do need to try to split these in half. So you can take your scissors or take something. Don't cut it, you don't wanna do that. But just come in and, and roughly split the wings in half. So we're gonna create two wings of even proportions. If you're like me, you're a bit of a perfectionist, you wanna get it perfect and it never ends up being perfect, but that's okay. And uh, his nails are not the uh, not what litmus I take perfection test. In. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the litmus test. <laughs> I like two of my nails. I'm a nervous person. Man, okay? how excited are you for guide school next week? Beyond. We get to meet Chaz for the first time. <sighs> we'll be wearing like full been... body condoms and hugging him. Yes. <laughs> I feel like we've been waiting to meet Chaz for too long. Way, way too, too long. long. So, guys, if I tip this to you so you can see, just taking a couple thread wraps in each direction will split the wing. Okay. Can and you I'm say gonna... splay for Cam? He wants to hear you say splay. Splay. 
I'm going splay. to splay the wings. Would you like to splay the splay wings them. for me, Timmy? So I'm going to keep taking a few thread wraps on either side. So I basically come in. It's very delicate material, so you got you can't rough this one. You kind of just got to do it. You know come who in. else is coming to guide school? Ooh. Mr. Barry Dickow. Barry Dickow. I heard that oh, you were Barry. joining us. Oh, man. This is going to be like a Thursday Night Live reunion I of know. the ages. It is going to be a lot of we fun. We got Colin. We got Barry. We got Justin. We got Chaz. Uh, who else is coming to guide school in here? Give me two thumbs up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I remember. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a great, great couple of weeks. Lots of work, but so yeah. much fun. So I've got them splayed. That's where I'd like them to be as far as a splayed perspective, but it's not where I want them to end up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one side first. I'm taking a little bit of this bone dry UV resin and just right on the very base between the wings, I'm putting a little drop down because what that's going to do is now I can manipulate those to where I want them to be. So I come up from below and I tip the wing up a little bit. So I get a little bit better height profile. I'm gonna touch it with my torch. And boom, they stay real well. Oh, normally folks, well, one time we had a dancing Rosina across yeah, the screen. Yeah, one time. We also had a birthday graphic for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All things that All crash things that... the show. Yes. Repeat so, after me, crash the show. Crash the show. Did you crash the show, Tim? No. One day that. John will be coming to guide school. Chaz is the only one with two thumbs up and I think Barry's fingers broke. <laughs> <laughs> and Colin fell asleep. He might be. Colin, yeah, that's right. Colin's in here too. Big day on the river yesterday, and he's probably sleeping. Probably. He told me. I saw him today. He told me he would be watching. Great tip on the wings from Mr. Randall Sally. Sally. Thanks, Randall. Sale, sell, yeah. Sally. Sale. Randall. For sale? Randall Sale. Randall, I believe it's Sally. Sale. Sally. Randall. The English language Can is you a give us mistress. the phonetics? <laughs> Okay, so yes, that is our wings. That's how I got them to where I want to. Um, if you were to really delicately do finger or do figure eights and up and down and around and all these things, you can achieve the exact same thing that I did and I think a, a lot easier steps. Um, once I got them where I want them to be, I like the little bit of UV because it really just keeps them there. Um, if you've got any pieces that are just kind of out on their own, I just take them out right now. For the most oh, part. Oh yeah, Bailu's in for Guide School 2022, folks. We oh, might have to do man. four classes. I I'm in. So. I'll do the so whole fun. summer. Heck that yeah. means you got to hang out with you guys. Yeah, it's the best. Okay, so now we're going to wrap our body forward. So I'm just going to put a little Save Could My Work Project. Could you use Peccary? Peccary? Absolutely, yeah. yeah so um, fantastic. did somebody ask that or you just asked that? <laughs> Barry said I can't find the effing thumb. <laughs> 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 Give me two uh, Ds, Barry. <laughs> yes. Give me double Ds, double Barry. Ds. Um, yeah, so Peccary, that's an interesting, uh, interesting material hard to find. It's basically off of a javelina, if you know what that is. Um, it's a very cool, very cool material and it actually gives you a, a little bit more of a, what's the word I'm looking for, like changing colored body. It's not all uh, one. Variegated? Uh, variegated. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say variegated. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, but hard to find. Oh yeah. Steve's looking for the guide school in the fall for his anniversary. Oh. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. Look, Barry, double D. Double He's in. D. <laughs> Those can be your thumbs. Barry, uh, you've just got a new nickname at guide school. <laughs> Barry giving out the D. <laughs> oh, well. For sale, yard sale, bargain yard sale. sale. I told you. 33 years teaching middle school. <laughs> Randall sale. Sale, sale, for sale, yard sale. Amazing. Sale me on guide sale. school. Sale. Okay, carry on. Okay. Peccary. Peccary, let's go back to our, uh, um, to our quill, okay? So I pull my quill straight up and I like my first wrap to be away from me. So we, I want you to pick it straight up in the, in the air and then make when you turn it, it lays flat. And so now you're getting to see that nice dark side you chose. And now we're just going to do touching wraps. Take your time, be delicate. Try not to wrap right on top of the last one. Uh, Norman Wells comment, let us know how this, uh, how close it comes to the version that you remember. Yeah, because uh, he, he did reach out and say he was excited to see this yeah. one. So I'm, uh, I'm curious. I know this, I'm not going to say old, but this is a, a classic style fly. Yeah, very. Um, some from a way back. And uh, a lot of us get away from classics, which aren't too, is not a good thing because they're there for a reason. Because they're classic. They are classic. So uh, what, what just happened on your vice there? Show me what that bobbin did. Oh, this? this a Norvice auto bobbin. You can look in the top of the screen. 
It auto retracts. So in a situ look at so here's the perfect example. I'm not trying to sell you guys on one, but you can buy them on Norvice or Rocky Mountain Platinum. No, go back to your post. Oh, you're killing me here. I know, but watch because this is why this is so magical. Yeah. It's because his other hand is occupied. Yeah. And so on a traditional bobbin, you would have to figure out with your hand how to turn the spool. Don't cut your thread on me. <laughs> uh, so now here's what he does. Yeah, so when I go to pick this up, if you could imagine trying to get that back back to yourself without having a retracting bob and but boom it's there yeah. i can lay it down oh or yeah i can pick it up now oh you can pick it up i'm gonna just gonna take it and lock off that material secure it in i want to leave a little bit of space right behind those wings because that's where i'm gonna start my uh, my hackle okay so i really want to make sure that's tied down because this material is a bit finicky um, just in that it can slide so and if I, if I let pressure off of it it would kind of bunch up and come off the body and now we're going to take this one step further because the truth about this stuff is it is fragile, right? So seeing it there, we get that really nice, um, that body appearance, right? So each of those wraps just created a, a more realistic appearance. Segmentation. Um, segmentation, yeah. So what I want to do now is I want to, I want to save that. I don't want that to slip. I don't want to catch one fish and it falls apart. So I'm going to take that same UV resin. You could just as easily take some hard as nails or something like that. I just like this because it's going to dry instantly. I like to do it before I put the hackle on because once I have that hackle on, um, it's hard to get back in here without making a mess. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to trim something off of this here. So I'm just going to come in here and just put the absolute lightest coating you can imagine on the body itself. Okay. Like so, it's gonna give it a little shine for now. It will dry quite flat. Um, but what that's gonna do is that's gonna save all that work. I could probably catch 10 fish with this fly now before that is ever gonna come undone. Um, and we do the same thing if it was peccary. We use this, the same style that really glosses it up, makes it look very realistic in appearance. Like so, okay. And I can see in there that there's a little tiny. Where is it? Oh, it's right at the back. Okay. So now I'm going to prep my hackle fiber um, to basically finish off this fly. We've done most of the hard work and we're just going to wrap it up. So I've got, again, my done colored dry fly hackle. Um, I'm going to prep it at the back here. I'm going to take, we've already given you the, the proper size for this fly, but if you got a hackle gauge, you can use that. I like to oversize this fly a little bit. So if you, if you're tight, this is a size 14, I would, I would approach if you're on a hackle gauge. Let those fibers spill halfway into the size 12. Um, I like to oversize it a bit. So come in on here. If you don't have a hackle gauge, I like to come in and you can easily just do this with it. And you can judge the height of the hackle by putting it on the body and bending it over. And that's that's pretty good size. I like it. So I'm going to come right, in here. So we got folks here chirping on my music again. Ooh, right. <laughs> and that hasn't happened for a long time. So Getting sensitive. Uh, it, it can be K-pop. Or K Bop or M Bop, and we can definitely get some kids' music going if Did you, you guys say want. Cake face? Did you say cake face? Her cake. Cake pop. Oh, cake pop. No, K pop. Show the dubbing method. Show the dubbing method. Uh, I'm not understanding that, Kellen. Well, there's no dubbing on this fly, Kellen, but you let me know and I'll show you. Oh, you might you might be referring to how I how you dub with this automatic bobbin. That I can show you. Oh too. yeah. Um, actually, we do have some dubbing coming up on the next fly, so maybe we can do it then. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow afternoon patio. We will be on a patio tomorrow all day. Yeah, on the boat. A floating patio. Mm -hmm. I love Justin Bieber. Is this confession or? <laughs> <laughs> You realize you can't confess things in front of everyone and expect it to be confidential. <laughs> this is a safe place. I love Justin Bieber. Stop. Uh, oh. thanks, I, I think that was like some form of uh, confessional Tourette's. Uh, yeah. And you didn't. You just stared at me. And I was okay. Uh, keep time. So Nathaniel had a question: Is Solares better or at not chipping off than the bird stuff? Um, What's I'm, the bird I'm stuff? I'm not sure what the bird stuff is, but, but I Solares. can tell you Solares will oh, not chip off. Bone dry. Start on it, folks. Solares bone dry. Just do it. Yeah. Call up rockymountainflyshop.net. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't even have to call them. You can just go to their website. 
Get solar as bone dry. You yep, will not dry. loon the bird stuff yet. Oh, okay. We gotcha. can say loon. I've heard a lot of stuff that it's tacky. I tied uh, with loon for the first half of my tying career, guys, and there's a reason I don't use it now. And I like loon. I like a lot of their other products. Great I just products. don't like. Yeah. I don't like their UV stuff. The golf is. I've heard probably the best things about golf. Uh, I haven't actually tied with it myself. Um, I've heard lots of good things. I just, I don't yeah, know if I anybody just... else really makes what's, what the bone dry is. The bone dry is a special thing. Yeah. And I know you guys in the States can get it in black too, I think, um, which is pretty cool. It's fantastic because a lot of conversations around it and uh, quite simply, it's, it's, it, there have no sponsorship or anything. Nope. Uh, we pay for our Solares full price, but Solares is fantastic. Yeah. But thanks to Shore, we can get it out here. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, so I guess let's just get back to this to finish it off. So we got our, our hackle here, guys. You're going to have a shiny side and a dull side. So the, the shiny side is the top side, and the dull side is the underside. Um, I've, I've prepped this hackle simply by um, stripping a few quills back. And I'm gonna tie it in just like that, okay? And I want the underside of it facing down the fly. So underside to the, I just want the dull side to point back when I tie it in. So just for that first wrap so that it orientates it better. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna get it tied. I like to lay the stem right between the, the wings. This is kind of something I've always done um, when I tie it in. So I'm gonna make sure it's tied in right there. Lay down some good thread wrap so that doesn't move. Okay, now I'm gonna cross between the wings grab that stem and pull it down, and now I've secured it in front of the wings as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clip that out. Um, and then from there, we're just gonna really wrap this, this quill. And sometimes getting it oriented and getting it going the way you want it to can be a little tough, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick half hitch here. Let's save this work. So I've just used the end of my bodkin tool, taking one wrap around it, um, with my thread and letting it slide off and that gives me my half hitch. Okay. Set my bobbin back out of the way on my cradle. And now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to kind of bend it up and forward first to kind of get it to through bend the where splay. I want it to. Through the splay. And now I want to try to get at least two, maybe three full wraps behind the wings before uh, Kellen might be asking about the half hitch. He's talking about when you finish it, uh, not the whip finish. Okay. Yeah, not I'll show you. I'll show you hitch the hitch. half hitch when I finish this fly too. Okay. Um, oops, sorry. See, I, if I take some pressure off, that it can really slide on you. That hackle. So I'm gonna do one, two. I'm gonna take my third one, and I'm gonna pass just in front of those wings. You can even kind of pull them back a bit. So I'm gonna do two behind, and I'm gonna do two in front. Two full turns in front, two full turns behind. And now that I'm holding here, I've got my stem. I look up, I like it, that's a good, good amount of hackle. I'm gonna bring my thread back to myself again. And I'm gonna take a thread wrap behind. Thread he wrap in front. He wants to see the bodkin half hitch. The bodkin half hitch, yep, we'll show you. And then I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna go behind and in front. This is probably the most important part here, guys. If I let off tension and I don't have that really tied in, I'm losing that hackle and it's not gonna be good. Okay, so really uh, make sure you have that tied down, um, really secured before you do too much. Okay, um, and so yeah, let's show, you, let's show you that half hitch again. So I'm just using the bodkin because most bodkins come with, that, with an opening on it, um, which is perfect. And it's tapered, so it starts thicker up here and it tapers to the point, which is easy for that thread to slide off. So I'm not going to trim this out just quite yet because if I do screw something up here, then I like to have the chance to go back in and grab it again. So all I do is I'm going to lay this. You can see this. I'm going to lay my uh, where's my thread? There it is. I'm going to lay my bodkin right on it. Okay. I'm going to take here. Where I'm going to do a double wrap because I'm finishing the fly. So I'm just going to wrap forward one, wrap forward two. Then I tip it back. I gather the eye of the hook in that hole, and I just let it slide off the end tight. If I was doing it with just one quick one as a saving one, I'm just going to go quick. I'm going to go boom, wrap once over the tip, let it slide off. Okay. Now I've done, I've done a double and a single. That's not going anywhere. Okay. I'll come in here and I'll trip, stiff that out. Hope that answered your question there, bud, but that's, uh, that's how we half hitch. Now I'm going to go in with a bodkin. With a bodkin. 
I'm gonna go in and snip out, try not to snip too many of the other fibers out of it. If you have any fibers that are really kind of errant out on their own, I, I like how that, how that turned out. Um, I'm gonna come in here with just the smallest drop, and again, I'm gonna use my bodkin off of my brush. Just the tiniest, tiniest drop of bone dry right behind the eye. Um, a problem quite frequently is that if you get some of these solutions in the eye, um, you obviously find it difficult to put your thread or through your, your, uh, your line through it later. So before I ever harden it, I like to bring something in there, like this is my wet finish tool, just so that when I harden this, I know that there's no resin actually in it. Come in here and... So the difference there. between bone dry and the solar thin, I would say that the bone dry is thinner than Oh, this. it's like... It's like syrup against peanut butter. Like the thin is actually not, it's the thinnest of yeah. the hard resins, but it's still yeah. very hard in comparison to. Bone dry, you like paint it on, and then thin, you still goob it on. Yeah. And then. Goob, goob is that uh, a technical? Goob. Yeah, goob. it's technical good, for the good. fluffies. If you got the fluffies, goob it. <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, like is that finished? Can, that is finished. Because I want to come back and see my people. Look at that. There it is, guys. That's, your, that's my version of the Quill Gordon. We like it. And the version that you guys are tying with us today. So. I'm just going to show you real quick here if I take that out. The best part about this fly is looking at the tip of it and being able to see how well you created that the front half. You can see your wings oh, displayed yeah. nicely. Slayed. That's what you like to see. Just like our perverted friend Ben Armstrong said, <laughs> split the splay and play all day. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> well, Ben. I'll leave it at that. That is it. So, uh, Laura, does that answer the question between the bone dry and the solar thin? Mm -hmm. Think of the viscosity Ooh. on a level of bone dry to what's their thickest one? It's called the flexi or flex is still lighter than heart or uh, than thick. thick. Thick is their thickest. So the viscosity level of bone dry to thick and it would go bone dry, uh, solar thin. Solar medium. Is there medium? medium? And then there's the flexi or the flex. So flex, think of that one as not really in the family at all. That one's almost like a aqua seal for your waders kind of thing. It's sort of yeah. It, it has movement. It'll hard. It'll be hard, but still move. Is what the flex is for. Yeah. Looks like Tim's gonna flex. As he scruffles his microphone and painfully hurts my ears, I will let him take that off while his microphone is on mute, and you guys can thank me later. So, what do we got for giveaways, folks? That's where it is my turn to give you guys the most pertinent information when it comes to giveaways, because I'm the giveaway guy. Oh, you're back. He's back. Double G. All right, he's back. The giveaway, the giveaway guy. guy. <laughs> so because we're getting to the end of the giveaways and we have tonight and two more, our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop have donated a few more of those hatch boxes that we gave away last week. So all of this stuff, if you guys get out your bingo cards, the first one here. Yeah, come on. Come on. Do you need it's me to all, show you some techniques? Well, it's all backwards here, so. <laughs> that is the Stillwater fly box. Okay, full of flies. A little fly box full of flies. I've got a whole ton of stickers. Our friends at Drift Out West Fly Fishing. Our friends at Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters. And our friends at Shore Fishing. So, there's a lot of stickers in here. So, you're going to get the Stillwater fly box. You're going to get all of these stickers and there's more. So get out your bingo cards. <laughs> there is a blue wing olive hatch box. Okay. From our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. And all these stickers, what I already talked about. You're going to get a Thursday Night Live keychain. Focus. It will not focus, so that's irrelevant. And I'm given two hats. Okay, Drift Out West Fly Fishing. 
And from our friends at Vision Fly Fishing, the Pass Me the Salt Hat, the group that sponsored our film, Nine Foot Rod. Pass Me the Salt. Love that. Drift out west fly fishing. And two fly boxes full of flies. The Stillwater Fly Box, the Blue Wing Olive Hatch Box, and a whole boatload of stickers. Yeah. Depending how big your boat is, that's a boatload. <laughs> that's a great... Uh... Okay. Saying that. So, boatload of stickers. Put all these back in the hat. That put is quite the giveaway. Here. That can't be understated. The amount of stuff uh, that's been donated for giveaways this year is really uh, spectacular. Yeah. So amazing. I can't put them over there. They fall out of the hat. I see. Tim will hold on to them. I want to so. look at them. Look at these cool boxes. Okay, so how do you win? You download a bingo card. We're going to do four corners again for the bingo card. And uh, the winner takes the whole package. But what I want to show you guys is a couple of the giveaways that are going to come at the end in season, season three, obviously. Episode 20. Okay, so the final episode, we have a what we call a donation giveaway. So for... And it's not on the website right now. I know some people have emailed about it, but it's not on the website right now. So uh, what we'll do is episode 18 is next week. 18 is next week, yeah. 18 or 19. I It's a lot of work to get that all together. Um, but yeah, so a couple of the things that we're working on and that we've got. Uh, so Norvice, uh, we've got a, a bobbin. I think they're doing a bobbin. Bobbin kit. A bobbin kit, so you'd get a bobbin and three spools yep. ish. And a spooler. And a hat and something. So there's that. We don't have it here because they're just going to ship it to you guys, whoever wins that draw. But here's the real cool thing this is from us at Fly Fish and Bow River Outfitters. Ooh. An Orvis Clearwater, five foot nine weight. Uh, it is not the four weight we gave away last year that randomly. The five foot nine weight or the nine foot five weight? The five foot nine weight. <laughs> it is short and fast. Very short and stubby. <laughs> I didn't open this one here, but I think it's a TFO Axiom. Um, whatever. It's a $500 rod, it says right there. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, let's find out exactly. And this one here is from our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Dot net. <laughs> this is a five weight, nine foot nice. TFO Axiom 2. Okay, awesome so you've rod. got two close to $500 fly rods. Yeah, they're getting given away. Nice. <coughs> but wait, the, the, the more. <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to hide this, but you obviously saw it. So the drum roll here is. We are also going to give away a fly Kia table, but what's cooler than all these things is that it's official. There you go. Look at that. We are giving away this custom made resin table and a brand new Norvice. A brand new Norvice mounted on this custom resin table with flies that are inlaid okay so you're getting this comes together it's about a thousand twelve hundred dollars yeah uh gift the norvice was donated from rocky mountain fly shop folks it's crazy so if you haven't shopped at rocky mountain fly shop uh yet okay you could go online and shop there that's their donation to you guys for being so awesome and all the support that you've shown them throughout the years. So the, this Norvice, brand new, and this custom-made tying table, it, it can be yours. And that's not even the flies. There's a lot more to come. 20, 35, 40 dozen flies in fly boxes. So there's a lot of stuff to be to be given away. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a pretty crazy giveaway for the last show. Um, like we said, once we get that up there, we'll let you know and you can go make your donation to get as many entries as you want. Yeah. And for every $5 donation that you put in, you're going to get another entry. 
Um, and we've got a program that will do its full random picking, and there's going to be a winner of some pretty, yeah. pretty epic stuff. Yeah, so uh, for every $5 donation to the show, you get your name put into an entry. Um, and I just showed you three of the prizes. We got a whole bunch more. We also have a, for if you're local, we have a uh, fishing trip that we're giving away too. Uh, one of our guides, Russell, has donated a day on the water with him. So I guess the prizes just keep coming in. Keep coming so, in. Seems to keep getting better. Uh, but that's what the TNL fam's all about, folks. Super awesome people. OQP, only quality people here. And uh, so let's get into giving away these hats, these stickers, and these yeah. fly boxes uh, from our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. And I'm going to find... Now i got to figure out the bingo and all this <laughs> stuff. And you, we, we all know how that never works. It's so, worked pretty well. Give yourself some credit. <laughs> i got to grab this. The so are we going four corners again today? Four, yeah, let's do four oh, yeah, corners. Yeah, four corners, guys. So when you pop up your bingo card, <laughs> we're going to do a, an initial call here of X amount of uh, calls. And you just got to let us know in the comments. Give us a bingo. Uh, we can verify if there's a couple bingos, who's actually came first. And if there's a tie, there's also a plan for that. But we're looking for all four corners of your card to be um, blocked off from the names that we give you. Yeah, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop rocks. I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comments, folks, because... Um, yeah, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop is absolutely gone above and beyond yeah. uh, for this one. So we're going to go call number 10, and we're going to see if this pops in. Look at that. Eight years didn't even know I struggled. Okay, so we're going to call four quick calls here, and you need all four corners like Tim Sick Table, Corey Mahan. Okay, he's the magician behind that table. <laughs> Bruce said, oh, I'm in the middle of building mine right now, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, four corners, folks. Uh, take 12% credit, just in time for bingo. Well, Ron, <laughs> that is a good time to get here. So four yeah. corners, get out your bingo cards. Absolutely. Uh, so going to win yeah. this stuff. Okay, talk to us. Talk to us. Next call is Norvi. So when you win, there is a uh, ID card on your bingo. You just got to give us that and we will tell you. Uh, the only way to download your card is to get the link that they sent you in an email. And that is it. So I apologize if you, um, you don't know where your card is. It is a third party app and uh, we just paid for it. So... Okay, you farmed him. So SOS, Shore Fishing, Lucky Hat, Set Set Set, Norvice, and you farmed him. And we're looking for all four corners, folks. So please, Terry Sather does not have Ognib. <laughs> Ognib. The old round cards, folks. Okay, oh, tip up, tip up, tip up, tip up, tip up, tip up, tip up. Okay. Nice yeah, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> we're just going to keep calling numbers here. Strip, strip, strip. Do you know what that sounds like, Tim? Strip, strip, strip. Yeah. Not fishing with Onorati. <laughs> <laughs> Those are stripers, Tim, not strippers. Striper, striper, striper. Well, or for, or for four. We got offers here, folks. Offers. Somebody's got to be close. Somebody's <laughs> lying in the weeds right now because they're so excited because they've got three out of four. And well, that's fantastic. So we're just gonna keep calling numbers. LDR, LDR, Salte, Salte. Aaron Noblan, Salte. Okay, folks, we're gonna go on to number eleven. Chug, Chug a beer. beer Chug. Well, I guess <laughs> we've never got to that one. Nope. I guess we're here, Tim. Chug a beer, Tim. Oh, Nathaniel Shell. He's got three. Got three. You down with the Q O Q P? Yeah, you know me, Ben Arm. He <laughs> thinks that was the title of the song. Uh -huh. Fly fishing Bover outfitters, folks. There it is. That is us. Love. That's twelve calls. We don't. Th I don't think we've gone this far. No, this is impressive. On any of in. the bingo games. Oh, three for yes, Jeff. Three. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Well, there we got all our sponsors in house. Shore fishing, Norvice, Fly fishing Bover outfitters, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. So those are the calls. If you're just joining us and you don't have a bingo card, well, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> this card is a joke. That is the no-fly zone, folks. 
That is the bingo. Chaz, bingo, Chaz, Doug, Lindsay, oh Mark. Oh, man. Everybody bingoed. Okay. Okay. 092. Let's see what this one is. Hey, Chaz, let us know your number okay, two. we're going to have to figure this. Mark, you've won way too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so he was RMFS and fly fishing bow over outfitters. By losing uh, bingo too. <laughs> so he was he won on thirteen. Uh, oh, Doug Lindsay. Okay, wait, did I miss? So Doug. Doug Mark, Chaz, 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 Chaz. Chaz Doug zero, is one thirty one. See what 131 did. Oh, not 141, 131. Uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. He also won on Rocky. We do have a tiebreaker game here, folks. So that looks like where we're going there. Chaz is 056. Unless Chaz beat it before Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, he will be the winner. And it looks like Chaz is the winner. He won it on Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters. Oh, Call wow. number 12. Call number nice. 12, Chaz. The best part about that is I don't have to ship it. <laughs> I will <laughs> see you, see you week. <laughs> next week. So Chaz is the winner, deservedly so. I don't awesome, know how you deserve nice. a bingo, but you do you because do. good people, OQP, OQP, only quality people win. Only quality people win. It's not true. <laughs> Anyone. It's random, folks. It's random. So, yeah, there's our bingo for the night. And uh, Wait a minute. Jade's not in here, is she? Yeah, well, they, she, uh, she wanted to go for round three. Yeah, she didn't go. For, well, she she had to take the night off because it was like a chance of not winning. <laughs> and well, you know what that means. Your uh, your streak disappears. So well, yeah. that's bingo, folks. We play yeah, fly yeah. and go here on Thursday Night Live, and it happens every night between the flies. But what you got to oh, remember? There. Morgan's there with Jade. Why oh yeah, <laughs> I'm here. So Morgan's Morgan's like I didn't let her play because yeah, she might she not want. So this is bingo. It's what we do. You can get your bingo cards on flyfishingboardover.com slash Thursday Night Live. There will be two more bingo episodes, two more, episode 18 and 19. And then on episode 20, there's no bingo because that is the donation lucky fly box. We call it the LFB giveaway. I just made that up. LFB. So, okay. It's all about the acronyms today. That's how that works. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Teresa, East Coast. Teresa, we appreciate you tuning in yeah. at 1017. You get yourself some sleep and you have a fantastic Friday. Uh, shipping for free this week. Chaz is there for guide school. That is the <laughs> truth. The best. The Fly best. Ingo. Fingo. Yeah. Ah, uh, lag. Patty, deeply apologize about that. Uh,. We're just going off the comments that come in here, folks. So we apologize. This has also happened before. Uh, if you did win, Patty, send me an email. We'll send you out a sticker pack because everybody's a winner here on <laughs> Thursday Night Live. So here's a question. Here's the topic of conversation before. Do you have the next fly in there? We get everybody threaded uh, up and then I have a bit of a, a, bit of a, a tangent to walk. We like our tangents here. And uh, hey, guys, make sure that you like this video with a heart. Put the heart in the, you know, and uh, share it if you want. But like it. Like it. Love it. I want some more of it. Okay, John, you have yourself a good sleep. Hey, John. Uh, Peace. But last few episodes, I'm penciling in. Awesome. Um, the wiener. John, peace out, brother. Okay. So let's check out this. That is this. The pupa. I'm not gonna say it's a great fly, but it's a great fly. But it's it has a chance of being a great fly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Let's conversate this way. Because yep. a good thing happened uh, on Friday when we were out fishing. And it made me think and it made me ponder a lot of things in fly fishing world because it's an un it's not even a rule. It's not even an unwritten rule. It's a topic of conversation. Okay, so let's work backwards from here. Do you think that fishing reds are legal? Well, are what's, they What's a red, Dana? Are they Okay, so it's a good question. So a red is a 
a section of gravel that fish clean off and they lay their eggs in there. So a female will clean off a section of gravel so you can clearly note them. I've tried taking photos of them. They're very hard to photograph, but they look like a bleached spot on, on the gravel, smaller gravel usually. And so that's where the fish will come in. They'll clean off with their tail and then they'll lay their eggs. Okay. And then the males will fight to get in there and uh, put their things on the eggs. <laughs> and so uh, people ask the question, is it legal to fish reds? Well, it's legal because I, I don't know anywhere. What they will do sometimes is shut the rivers or the section of the rivers where the fish spawn. Uh, down because it is it, it is unethical. There's my stance. Yeah. <coughs> Remember, I always say I don't have a lot of like absolutes. Well, there's an absolute. Yeah. So then, why would it be unethical? Um, I mean, it's a great time to catch fish. Why? Because they're super predatorial. They're super aggressive. So why would they not chase down a streamer? Of course they would. Of course they would. Um, but why is it unethical? Well, because they're going through a lot of stress. To just try and reproduce so the fights that they concur or incur whatever the right word is um, are because of of, of of them wanting to pass on their genes so a fish has a couple things they need to do in this world eat to stay alive uh, reproduce and and not get eaten eat not get eaten and reproduce it's a pretty simple lifestyle that they live they don't uh, go to the theater uh, they don't have you know a civilized social life maybe there is one we're not super aware of um and so when you fish the reds they're super stressed because they will die just to spawn uh, which a lot of salmon do is they return up the river so the the reds are unethical we've all agreed i believe um um not illegal also not ethical yeah. legal but maybe yeah so everyone's on the same page Okay, so here's another question. Um, there's a spot on a lot of rivers where fish stage to go up other rivers to to spawn. Okay, so then I think it takes us back a step. Uh, in the staging grounds, is it unethical to fish those fish? Probably not, really. Ish. Um, yeah. uh, you know what? You know they're. Whatever you're catching fish, it's I, I get it. You're not catching them on the reds, um, but and this is not a jab at anybody here. This is just a conversation because I've seen it posted in the years past from other guides in the area, who sit in these staging grounds, and they hammer on big fish. Okay, well why are they big? Because they've eaten a lot, knowing what they're about to go into. Uh, so super cool. You found the fish stocked, stacked up ready to run and uh maybe it's not unethical i don't really know uh the answer to that so i ask you guys this um but then this goes like we said we're going to start from the reds and work our way back so working our way back so this happened on friday so we were out on a river uh close by to us and we found this spot it was uh probably eight square feet and it was pretty fast water. Uh, we tied on the rig that I showed you guys last week, but we took the indicator off. Um, and, and now we weren't targeting the spot, but this is how we were looking for fish was they were in the faster water right at the bottom. And so what we call the pogo rig, we were basically tight line nymphing ourselves through there. Well, we got into a spot um, where we probably hooked 30 fish in half an hour. And you probably didn't go four or five casts without a fish. I'm telling you, this wasn't more than eight to ten square feet. This this little zone, we'll call it a zone. It wasn't it wasn't a hole. It was a zone. So, me and my fishing buddy and I said it's time to go because, um, yes, it's fun and we literally could have sat. I don't know how long we could have sat there and just kept hitting on fish, and it just kind of made me think like, when is when is the gentleman's call to walk away from a pool, to walk away from a zone of fish like that? Uh, because they always say, don't leave feeding fish, which I, I, I hear it and we all want to catch fish. 
Uh, but I guess I'm just starting a conversation and I don't really know the answer. Uh, for us, it was 30 something. <laughs> it yeah. was, and, and I don't talk numbers. It was, it was ridiculous. Like it was, uh, it was pretty, and it wasn't that we walked down the river and caught, you know, 20 fish in, in five miles of river. I think that's totally cool. I'll just keep going. Uh, but it was that it was in the zone and then we we're just like, okay, we just literally, I think we're catching the same fish over and over and over again. So what do you guys think? Do you have a, uh, gentleman's or a gentle lady, uh, limit or time frame that you spend in one hole or one little zone, um, before you walk away, before you say enough's enough. Um, do you have things like that, that you put into your, your fishing toolkit? Um, I don't know. Talk to us. Let us know uh, what you guys do. But uh, yeah, it just it struck a conversation in my head. Is when do we walk away? Because damn, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was uh, pretty awesome. I think those are hard. I mean, they are hard conversations, but they're harder to know when that time is because for each person, it might feel different. Um, a lot of you guys have reiterated here, yeah, we're not fishing them when they're on their reds. You know, if it's a mouth of a river, I'm not gonna sit there and, cause it's obviously a staging area. Um, but fish could stage pools below a river mouth if they're running into it. I mean, let's be honest, if you fish for a bull trout at all in the month of August and September, you're fishing for a migrating or staging fish. Is that unethical? I mean, I hope not, cause that's really the only way we can catch that species. Now that's not sitting at the that's not sitting in the creek that they spawn in and catching them, and that's not sitting at the mouth of that creek and catching them. Um, but I think at some point in your head you're just gonna know something's gonna click, and you're like, ah, this doesn't feel right, yeah. or maybe it's too easy, or maybe you resorted to a squirmy when nothing yeah. else worked. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. But if you just at some point as a as someone who lives in the outdoors or fishes in the outdoors, you just know when something doesn't feel right. And if you feel like you're kind of looking over your shoulder you probably know it's not right. Like if you don't want somebody else to witness what you're doing, maybe walk away. Yeah. So I guess it's the, uh, hairs on the back of your net yeah. starts. They, I don't know. I guess, I guess as, as fishermen and conservationists, there's a time when, uh, maybe it's like, I don't know. And it's all subjective to the time of the year, to the size of the pool, to the size of the run, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And, and as guides, people pay us to catch fish. That's, I know we talk a lot about how fishing is always secondary, but that's um, that's why it's on a fly fishing trip. It's, it's what we're trying to do. So yeah. uh, Digital Buddha's in the house. What's happening, David? Um, yeah, so there's that. That's kind of my rant. And then uh, um, it's, that's it's, right. It's you good because it. it's also an accountability thing because most of us don't fly fish alone. There's other people around us or friends and it's like those checks and balances are there um, for a reason, right? Like we, we do it with each other lots. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, eh, you know, you're going to know when, but reading from yeah. what your comments are, I can tell you guys are very much on the same page as we are, but um, yeah, you feel it. Yeah. When it seems too easy, I move away to a spot that makes it harder. Love the challenge. Um, and that's, isn't that fly fishing? Like, yeah. Uh, if, if you could catch a hundred fish every day, you probably wouldn't keep doing it. No, it's too easy. I'll, right now, I'll say I'll go for that tomorrow. Yeah, but, but <laughs> we'd like a good yeah, day here we, and there for sure. But so yeah, so that's kind of what's happening. Um, rant. But what I wanted to do, folks, is we're gonna go to commercial. But before we do, for some of you guys that showed up late, I know you can rewatch this. Uh, we put a lot of work into the sub intro of the show, so let's show that and let's show some commercials. You told them which thread goes in. Yeah, we're gonna use that A dot or A dot. Uh, UTC seventy in yeah, black. Something thin and uh, dark you, color. You get that in. Wait, we don't we don't catch fish. That's the lie, <laughs> Steve. Steve, uh, I just want to show this because I think it's super funny. So enjoy this, and it's gonna hit commercial right after, and then it's gonna come right back to us, and we'll get into tying this fly. Uh, this fly doesn't take very long, and then we'll get into our wins, and then folks, that's about the end of episode seventeen. So. Uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live. Uh, we're so happy that you guys join us, that we uh, have four episodes left. I think so, yeah. Today's 17 or 16? What? Uh, Tim? Yes? What did you eat for breakfast? 
Wheaties? <laughs> I don't think you did. What? Did you have shrimp? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> like seriously, look look at the monitor. I don't see what you're seeing. You're knee high to a grasshopper right now. Well, that's fairly normal. <laughs> I mean, an actual grasshopper. Oh, wow. Not, not the ones at the museum that I th are... I thought you agreed we weren't going to beat down Tim this episode. That was last I, episode. I'm hoping to grow you up this episode. Oh. How are you even going to reach the vice? Well, what about yourself? What are you talking about? Well, I can see what you mean about you, not me. Wow. This is a whole different world down here. What did you do to the program? I... I told you. I, I told you to buy new batteries and get some more memory cards today. Well, all I did is press start. That start button? <laughs> yeah, that start button. That's shrink. Oh. Not start. Well. Quite simply, here we are now, stuck in this. I, look at your chicken legs. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, look at those I'm things. gonna be fine because I just have to jump up on the keyboard uh -huh. and hit some buttons. But how are you gonna tie the flies? I don't know. This is. This is so strange. I guess, do you have a better zoom? Because we're going to need it. No, but like, how do you get up to the vice? I guess, you bring any rope? Quite literally, yeah, probably. That's the thread. That's only 140. And I'll you could probably climb a mountain <laughs> with that right now. I don't know, but we'll meters? try to get this figured out. This is weird. Probably going to just go to commercial if I can figure out how to get up on the keyboard there. And we'll be hopefully back to normal size when you guys come back after commercial. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well-organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. Oh yeah, so. Oh yes. You really like that, that tone in your voice. Oh yeah. Well, it's, I don't, it's uh, there's a podcast that does it. So. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't get you out of my mind, Tim. Ew. So for those who showed up late, uh, that was a that's little. Right, that's right, Cam, I am still taller than you, so you watch your mouth. Uh, that was a little fun we had today. And, uh, oh, it's time for Doug's <laughs> joke. Uh, what is the fastest fish in the water? The fastest fish in the it's water. A, I said, Timothy, what's the fastest <laughs> fish in the water? Oh, I don't know. Tell yeah. me. Tim doesn't even know. Uh, a motopike. A motopike. Oh, my goodness. All right, oh, folks. Something. The one that gets away. Digital yes. Buddha. Got it right. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, my friends, let's do this one. So this is a caddis uh, pupa. So what's a pupa? Well, this is the stage in which a caddis is probably um, very close in relevance to what we would call the uh, emerger. So these close to that emerging process, we're still, I, I absolutely love this fly. I fish this as a dropper um, a lot in the summer and not just on the bow, but on our mountain streams. It's just super effective. Caddis are an abundant food source in our um, fisheries here, and there's tons and tons and tons of them all the time. So um, it's never a bad thing to fish this. I actually prefer this, this specific fly with a bead because um, I like to fish it down a little bit, have a little bit of weight, but easily could be fished this way as well. Um, so it's just basically representing a caddis that's in the process of moving from its stage on the bottom. So what you see here is um, Scotty Plesh is here, boys. Welcome, hey, Scotty Plesh. Up, Scotty? He's on the YouTube. Scotty is, too hotty. Scotty too hotty. <laughs> I love it. Um, so what we're trying to represent is the casing around the body, and the body is about to emerge out of this. 
Um, and so on the next fly we tie next week, the Sparkle, uh, LaFontaine Sparkle and Merger, we're actually gonna tie it very similarly. We're adding one other piece and we're gonna take a piece of this shuck and trail it off the back. So um, that's what we're gonna call it, a shuck. So it's, uh, this is a great one to kind of lead into next week's fly as well. So let's hit this one, let's get this done. This isn't a tough one. Um, we're again gonna tie this in a size 14. Um, we have a lot of bigger caddis here too. I, I really like you in a size 12. But probably the essentials are the, are the 12 and the 14 to have in the box. I know there's a lot of rivers that have a lot smaller caddis, so um, really just match it to whatever. But we're gonna tie this on a little bit bigger one. So open your next package here, guys. Um, go ahead and take out the materials. So what we're using tonight, I'll run through the materials quick in case you need to go grab some. Um, as far as the dubbings are concerned, we're using a, a dark olive green, like so. If it's got a little sparkle in it, doesn't not necessary, doesn't have to. Oh, it's a good question here. Yeah. Uh, Mike asked about the missing fly for episode 18. We shipped them all out last Wednesday. Yes. Uh, so if you guys get a random package from us, we we forgot to put anything in there that clarified uh, what uh it, it is and so it's it's not really an extra fly it's for the missing fly so they've all been sent out um sh yeah cross your fingers folks that they show up they show up yes continue so what size of bead what <clears throat> color bead gold um gold is my go-to on this fly so if i were to yeah if i were to tie it it would be with a gold bead um as far as materials are concerned very very simple we're using it, and these are just the ones that Hang we have. Hang on, we had a crest for the baking cam. Oh, there it is. There it is, Matt. Red you ask, velvet. you will receive buttercream and Oreo. Buttercream. Oh, that actually, I'm ready to crush yeah, that. I'm, I'm sweating. It's hot in here. It is warm in here. Is it me or is it just you? No, or is it us it's together? It's bus. Or is it Both me and my bus. gut <laughs> looking? <laughs> it's bus. Okay, so that's for Matt. Anytime you guys need a quick fix of the baking cam. Yeah. Just no, ask for it. You no guys. This water BS. This is right. that good song I was telling you about. I right. never heard it before, but it's good. So we got olive dubbing and a, a dark brown um, dubbing as well. These ones are kind of shiny in appearance. Doesn't need to be, but it's just what, we, what we've distributed with you guys. Um, and then we need, this is a piece of Antron. You could use Antron Zelon. Hi, Lou. Party time. Happy birthday. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> it's hard you stop interrupting me. I just, people are leaving. All people right. are. Stop leaving, people. Let's Cricky get Nuggets this got his. You're welcome. Awesome. Well, happy birthday, Bye, Lou. Love you, buddy. Have yeah, a great pal. night. Good night. Okay, so we're going to use this. this is going to be our shock material. There's, You can actually get it in dubbing as well. Um, that's actually what I normally use is Antron dubbing in this color. Um, it's that, that tan color. This, is, uh, this would have come off a spool, so it's a little bit longer. Um, which is actually probably easier to use. What so, if I like the song more than you? Like it more than I like the song or like it more than me in general? That would be a very sad, very sad day. <laughs> uh, you can't wait <laughs> until I show the folks my dance. Oh, today. you don't even know, people. You don't know what's coming. You actually can't handle it. I'll speak for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our thread. Uh, I've got that UTC. Uh, it's, this is a 70 in black. I just like the darker color because I'm gonna use, put dark dubbing on at the very end and I want it to be dark. I don't wanna be using a too light of colored thread. So I'm just gonna lay down a little thread base and then I'm gonna come back up to about the middle of the fly. That's where we're gonna start tying this in. Um, I like to double this over. So in what we gave you, um, first thing you should do is go in there and let's trim off these ends and make them square. So come in here, just gonna square off that side. Switch sides, I'm gonna square off this side. And then I'm gonna fold it in half. So I like to double this up for the amount of material that's there. Okay, like so. Some people like this a little more sparse. I, I personally just like it. I like it to be a little broader. And then I'm gonna again come in here and just square off this material. And I'm gonna tie it in right here. Just take a nice large gathering wrap to make sure you pinch it down on top of the hook. And this this isn't critical that we keep right on top of the hook. It can it can go around if you need because that's actually kind of what we're going to try to attain. So we're going to take start taking thread wraps back, okay, and down into the bend a little bit, not too far into the bend, just just over the hump, okay. Now we're going to come back. Now in there in your materials we have just a, the tiniest piece and it is hard to see. I can tell you it's hard to see because I've already lost it on my tying bench. It is just the smallest piece of, of tinsel. Hold on, Chaz called SOS. 
SOS. Tim, show those scissors again. Oh, I can do that. My short scissors. I mean, I, I, I'm i not going to say I'm a scissor geek, but I do love a good pair of scissors, and these are a good pair of scissors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just have this tiniest little piece of mylar tinsel here, and we're going to tie that in, and we're going to wrap it. This is probably a totally unnecessary step, but I do really like the way that it looks. So I'm going to lay that in here, tie it down, and I'm going to tie it all the way back to where I left that shuck material. And then right there, I'm going to put a little half hitch because you guys requested to see me spin the dubbing a little bit different way. Um, so what we're doing here guys, we're, all we're going to do is make a short dubbing noodle um, with our green dubbing here. I'm going to quickly show you guys how I can do this using the Norfice function. Uh, the what? Uh, Norfice. The Norfice. <coughs> so all I do here is I'm going to come in here. Maybe I should back the camera out. out there you go. So I, it's, there's no real super rocket science to this. You just need to get your dubbing started on, on the thread by just basically pinching it on there. Um, and once I start spinning, it's gonna start to grab like that. And that's more than enough for what I need. This is a funny dubbing, it doesn't like to stay tight, but that's okay. Pull it out. So all we've done is made a dubbing noodle, guys. And from here, we're just gonna create this body, okay? So I'm gonna start wrapping right back by that shuck. And we do want it to be kind of bulky because we're gonna be covering it up with this big um, this big shuck, so it's okay if it's got some bulk to it. I'm not trying to create any real specific type of taper. We just don't wanna go too far forward with it. We wanna leave a little bit of space up there for the rest of it. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space back from the eye. About an eye and a half length, maybe more. Okay, like so. And I'm gonna take that little piece of mylar that I have, and I'm going to just open spiral wrap it. This is just giving a little bit of shine that's gonna come through underneath this shuck. Shuck, I like saying that. Okay. And it kind of segments that underbody, even though it's really not necessary. That's just kind of the byproduct. Okay. And I'm gonna go in there and snip that out. So guys, yeah, the SOS, if you didn't catch it earlier, that's just a way to let me know I need to slow down or explain something. So uh, yeah, yeah, John, that is cool. Um, and it's, a, it's it's one of the many really cool functions about these, these vices, but uh, yeah, when it comes to making dubbing noodles or doing a ton of um, bigger stuff where you, you need a lot more dubbing, especially on streamers and stuff where I'm gonna use ice dub, I love it. Just spin it on there in no time and you can whip out a fly. So now we're gonna secure this shuck down. So I'm gonna advance my thread forward just a smidge. And now I'm gonna pull this shuck out over top. Shucka. Shucka. Shucka lucka. I'm gonna pull it kind of out over top of this fly. And as I get to the eye, I'm kind of trying to spread that material so it goes all the way around the hook. And same with back here. Um, once I tie it in, I can adjust it again. But I wanna basically just be able to see through it just enough to see that underbody, that dark olive underbody. Um, but I want it to be mostly covered at the same time. So once I feel like I've got it kind of spread out around there, I'm just going to grab my thread. Uh, I don't think CDC would work well for the shuck. No, it really wouldn't. Uh, it would not hold that volume. Because that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here momentarily, and you won't be able to do this with CDC. So I've taken a couple wraps. Now I'd like to go and kind of peek underneath. You can see, you can just barely see that through there, but I want to even out the material. So if I have a little bit more on one side than the other, I just kind of twist it around. And it'll, it'll move in there. Now to create the nice bubble effect that we want, um, I'm gonna go in there with my, I'll use my whip finish tool because it's got a nice little hook on it, okay? And I'm just gonna pick at this material and I'm just gonna try to tug on it a bit and pull it. Come on, cue cam. Tug it and pull it, cam. Tug it and pull it. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna prop that up a bit and make it look a little bit more like a, a bubbly looking shuck. That's just pulling a little bit of tension off of it. So it looks like that. Okay, get that nice kind of spherical appearance to it. You can see it's pretty even all the way around. And then once I've got that, now I'm gonna take a couple more wraps to really lock that in. And then I will trim out the head of that shuck material. Set it aside. Take a few thread wraps to kind of bind all that down. And I want it to have left about an eye length behind the eye 
just to keep it clear. And if you need to clean up any of, uh, what are we looking for here, this. If you need to clean up any of that material stuff around the eye, I'm just gonna go in here, use this cautery tool or use some scissors. Clean that up, because I want everything back away from the eye. I want the last thing at the front to just be um, that next dubbing we're gonna use. If you got any errant material that's just kind of hanging out, just go ahead and trim it out. It's a good time for it. And now, guys, all we're gonna do is take a little bit of that darker brown stuff, that darker dubbing. Uh, we're just gonna make a little tiny head on this. So we don't need very much at all, just, to, just to, enough to basically coat our thread. I'll make just a really short dubbing noodle here. And I'm just gonna start wrapping. That's still too much. I'm gonna start wrapping basically just behind the eye, or just in front of that, um, the shock that I've created. And wrap forward, making sure it's a pretty tight little head, so if I gotta kinda twist my dubbing as I go onto the thread, that's what I'm gonna do. Just like that. If you got a little bit of excess, you can get that out of there. Take a couple wraps just in front. Uh, the comments. <laughs> Incroyable. And then, yeah. guys. <laughs> Sam said, it's Cam said, tuck with your left like someone else is doing it for you. <laughs> and Trevor said, better if you sit on your hand first. Oh, man. A, and then when it goes numb. <laughs> Jeez. They're talking about tying flies. Yeah, obviously. If you have a numb hand, folks, and you spin the Norvice, it's a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I could leave these fibers in here, guys, and it actually would look Dude, quite natural. Dare you. <sighs> I don't like leaving Tie them. the fly, Tim. Chug the beer. Share the post. I'm Cut the hair. <laughs> Just a little trimming up top here. I don't want them to be long up there. I don't mind leaving a couple off the bottom. It, it almost gives a leg appearance to it. Um, but that is our sparkle. Leg. We our, want uh, our who made it? Our who, who made it? La Fontaine? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh -huh. You called it the emerger. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That's who it, guys. is who is La Fontaine shucking with a numb hand? You know, tying oh, with a left hand, sitting on your hand before you tie the flies is never a good idea. Look PG at that! Boys, we boys. power tied that. It's a good one. Nice Easy to tie, super quick, super effective. How do you fish this thing? Does anybody have any suggestions in here? Yeah, suggestions. Any folks in here have any suggestions on? How they would fish this fly? Would you fish it on a nymph rig? Would you fish it behind a streamer? Or would you fish it as a dropper subsurface? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, it's folks. Not Tourette's, folks. <laughs> I gave them. I gave them two winks, and one the middle wink might go lost on some. Mm. But we can explain. <laughs> I got winked at today too. <coughs> Whoa! Where? Oh yeah, he did. Yes, he did. It was not the <laughs> wink I wanted. Under a BAC. Uh. I would ask Ren. Well, <laughs> Ren would tell you. Yeah. To fish it in stonefly season. Yeah. <laughs> she would say, "Fish it in the fishy water." Yeah, Bruce fished it wrong today. <laughs> so whatever he did. Uh. I wasn't out there, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. How was I'd it fish it. Roman says he'd fish it in oh, the water. Oh, for the win, Roman. For the win. Just a straight dry merger. Yeah. So. Fish it like a no bead hair's ear. Nymph, drift it, and let it swing up. That's the best. That's, That's the my best. favorite. Yeah, I like that. Because the fish destroy these caddis pupas as they're coming up and emerging. Um, and when you, so I said like a streamer, so if you put it on a sink line and swing it through a pot of, uh, dorsal finning fish, it's porpoising is the word That's I was looking so. for. <laughs> um, try dorsal folks, finning. uh, swing it, swing it like a streamer right through a pot of fish and see what happens or under as a dropper subsurface. Um, but you might need something up top to let you know the fish has taken it. Yeah. Uh, because, because you're going to need to know the fish took it. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful day. Enough yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful day. Uh, Bruce, where did you float? We're going way down low tomorrow. Yeah. To the open. bottom of the Bow River. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> 
Can't, I actually can't wait to eat that cupcake yeah, that I baked. That that's baked. The buttery. Uh, that baked. Super buttery fantastic, cupcake. folks. So yeah. uh, we did a few things tonight. We tied a quill Gordon. We, we got super small on you guys and had a little mm-hmm. fun on, on our tables here. We talked about something, uh, an ethical question about fishing in reds versus fishing in uh, staged fish. Or when you fish one spot and catch a lot of fish, do you move on or what do you do? And I think Bruce had a really good statement at the end of that conversation um, about the gentleman and the gentleman that walks away. Yeah. Knowing when it's Lafarge to Fish Creek. Mm. Yes. Good section. Peggy. Floss it like a peg egg with a giant bead head in front of it. Nobody no flosses, flosses fish. never. <laughs> no one in Alaska flosses fish. No. Uh, yeah, folks. Yeah. So basically what's going to happen now is we're going to get to the favorite part of the night where you guys get to be a big part of the show. Uh, hopefully you be interactive and share with us some of your wins for the week because this was a good week. A very fun week for a lot of people, although Alberta is still essentially in lockdown mode. Lockdown lockdown mode will it ever end well it depends who you ask yeah, i suppose that's a good question so uh what are the float time on the lower bow what the, what are the float time uh, uh marvin i don't understand quite the question um can i get you to ask that question another way what are the float time on the lower maybe bow? how long it takes to float section uh, uh, come out where i am it's disgusting sometimes uh, <coughs> yeah the flossers so I, I think that I did well on the background music tonight, folks. Yeah, it wasn't bad. And we tried something a little different. We put it straight through the feed instead of on the stereo and through the mics. Uh, maybe it was better. If you liked it, tell us, and we can definitely uh, keep doing that for next time. Also, make sure that you like and give this a heart because that helps people who are like you to see the post and love the post, and we get more cool people in here. Uh, put in a takeout oh, yeah. points. Okay, so you can go police to McKinnon. Uh, it's a long day, really long day, if you're fishing hard uh, because the water's really low. Uh, McKinnon to Legacy is probably like a five, six hour float fishing it well. Maybe a little longer right now. And then people like us are going to go crazy all the way down to Cars Land, which we might not be back by next Thursday. So if we don't show up for you guys, come and find us. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are two different ones in Legacy. 22x uh, to McKinnon. That's uh. 22x. Oh, fish. so uh, Fish Fish Creek oh, to fish McKinnon. Creek, yeah. We call that the milk run. Yeah. Um, that's a long. That's one. way too like. Here's the thing, and so fish like float times are subjective because it's about how you fish or how you guide in our perspective. Um, and how you work over water and how you take your time or you don't take your time. A lot of guides will go uh, Fish Creek down to McKinnon and they'll take uh, the day and uh, they have clickers on their boat and they count fish and they go down the middle of the river. Uh, And that's their style and that's okay because that's their jam. Um, But yeah. Oh yeah, Bruce, appreciate you. I love you like a brother. See anyone who props up the background music (laughs) <laughs> we pretty much became best friends. Your ego's satisfied yeah. now? Yes, not yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if you have questions about float times and where to float and all that stuff, you can also send us a message. Yeah. Um, and we'll do our best to answer that. But like I said, it is very subjective on all that stuff. So. Okay, so what we did there <laughs> is we tricked you guys because sometimes you guys fall asleep on us. So we're like, hey, 
Um, did you get up to your computer or your t smart TV and check the volume? Did you? Tell us. <laughs> uh, oh, the audio is back, folks. It's back. Now it's back. back. Yeah. SOS. <laughs> <laughs> start over. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll start over. Oh, Justin Fisher, two it. thumbs up. He's coming to guide school. What's up, dude? Uh, okay, folks. Did you catch it now? So what I said here is I got to think back all the things. <laughs> Nobody will ever know what I said no. because it's not recorded anywhere. Uh, but I said this is the favorite. This is my favorite part of the night um, because we get to share with you guys and you get to share with us some really awesome things that have happened in your week. Uh, little wins are big wins and it doesn't have to be. Uh, life changing. It's just a bunch of little things that come together, and when we get to share them, it's contagious and it spreads like wildfire. So we are the light. You are the light. Let's spread the light. Let's be the light. Um, episode seventeen. Oh my! It's emotional it's crazy. because it's crazy to think of. yeah. Really, of all the seasons, I'm least ready to see this one done. Yeah. Not ready. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The fact that uh, you know we had a bunch of kits go out early. The work in the aspect of packaging the kits was done preseason, uh, which left us the ability to just spend time, more intentional time with you guys, uh, do little goofy things at the start of the show to try to hopefully make you guys laugh, um, and just kind of up that value of the show. And so. There it is. It comes quick. It comes quick. And I think it is a very, I made a post about it today and I think it's very true. And somebody commented, uh, Matthew actually commented on there. Uh, now's the time to announce 20 more episodes. Yes. Uh, next year. <laughs> and so, uh, Matt said, it's just the reason why TNL is so awesome because it's only quality people. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and that's a fact because you guys are so awesome. The, the vulnerability with the group here, the fact that this is uh, a drinking beer, tying flies, talking about fishing, uh, going offside quite often. But at the end of the day, it's about uh, really cool people like you guys uh, that we get to hang out with. Um, so it's awesome. So, Tim, why don't you share your win with everybody? Yeah, why don't you just, just scroll up for me first? There was one a comment here from Shaylin, a little bit more more right there it said Justin Shoop and I have made it to 24 weeks we just found out we're having, oh having a baby boy that's amazing that's super awesome huge congrats to you guys that's uh wow yeah <laughs> wow great Not, there's no bigger blessing in life than kids uh, nothing like it uh for me what's my win this week well um I would say for me it's you know it's it's more than just this week it's uh Work for me lately has been a bit of a drag. I'm struggling, I'm exhausted in this COVID stuff, being a paramedic, it's, we're just dealing with a lot of the byproducts of it as well as seeing some COVID on a daily basis. Um, I think we're all kind of burnt out and I've needed like something to look forward to. I'm very motivated in things coming in the future. Um, so for me all week, all I've been dreaming about is Friday. You know, I get to hang out with a couple of my, my best buds and my kid and we're going fishing. Um, which has really got me through this week. I had an extra long week of work, so it was just, yeah, simple, but something that's a lot for me and looking forward even further. I know I only got a couple more days of work till we head into two weeks straight at guide school. And for me, that's uh, guide school is one of the biggest blessings in my season at yeah. the start and at the end. I get to meet some people. I'm so excited to meet the group that's in here that, you know, we've, we've met virtually for over a year, but I feel like I know you, but I've never met you, and I can't wait to hope you're good with yeah. physical contact. Cause it might be Full body condoms. <laughs> Full body condoms. Yeah. yeah, so that's my win, guys. Um, and that's, that's a lot of it's cool. thanks to you guys. Yeah. yeah, this is pretty awesome. Had a good chat with Laura on the phone, and she booked a float oh, that's in great. July with her son. So that's super cool. Going to uh, be an awesome day on the water. Uh, we had a good chat about what it is to go kind of on a guided trip and all that stuff. Uh, love taking new people. Uh, for me, yesterday, uh, I got to do the first guided trip of the season for myself. And uh, I met some two dudes who I would now consider pretty good friends. Uh, we had an incredible day on the water. 
Uh, fishing was great, but that was a subsidiary prize to the awesome two dudes that I got to meet. And uh, pretty cool. They've booked a few more trips going into the summer. Um, and that's always pretty special to me when you get to spend multiple days with uh, pretty awesome people. Uh, so there's that. Uh, we caught a rainbow trout that I have never <laughs> seen before. Big, um, big bugger. An actual close to 25 inch rainbow. Um, but yeah, that was, I've actually never seen a fish that big on the boat. Like a true, like you, we measure your net. It's a lot of people don't understand actually what a 20 inch fish is. Um, let alone a 22 inch fish, let alone a 24 inch fish. Um, let alone a 25 inch fish uh, but this one was absolutely cranky what's cool about that it's not that, not that we caught it it's just random when you're nymphing you don't you don't know what you're getting uh, it's not like we sat there and targeted this but to see a fish of that statue in this river is so awesome and so promising um, super fantastic day yesterday I just feel so grateful for people uh, and all the people who come to guide school you're literally trusting in us to mentor you guys and it's not cheap and I appreciate it and I respect it and I honor it and I'm so excited uh, to get to spend that time with you guys starting next Friday and just help you guys out on your guiding journey or your uh, getting better at fishing, rowing a drift boat or whatever um, and just into becoming better people because I'm going to be a better person once that uh, guide school is finished. Yeah, lots of good things. We're going fishing tomorrow. And um, some of you guys, I haven't read your stuff here, but I do want to go back. Uh, Tavis got his truck fixed. The awful noise. <laughs> um, and he's going floating this weekend. So that's awesome. Yeah. Ryan got his first drift boat uh, from one of the OQPs I've met here. going to give her um, only quality people. OQP. I need a shirt made that says yeah. that. OQP. Epic. It's beyond epic. So good job, Ryan. Uh, Scott finally bought my first Stone Glacier hunting pack and my first set of wading boots. Now time to get them wet. Oh, yeah. Um, so somebody in here was a outrider for the wagons. Who was it? Who are you? I shared <laughs> it on the screen, but I didn't get a chance to read it. Uh... Um, oh, maybe disappeared, but uh, Sean, when cousin Wade Allison got called up to the Flyers for his first NHL game tonight, it played amazing. Best flyer on the ice, Western Michigan boy. I know exactly who he is, Sean. That's so cool. Fight on, fight on for Western. Uh, Chaz, my win is the okay. Let's share these on here so that uh, everybody can see them and read them. So, uh, Super cool, Western boy, love that. Chaz, my win is the community. I know I say it every week, but I really love this family. It really brings us together. I'll lay more sleeps away, I love you guys. Thanks for your authenticity. Yes. You wanna read that one? Had the best day today. <clears throat> I called for slots at work, tuned into Thursday Night Live, hooked into two beauty rainbows today, and celebrated my 10 year anniversary. Justin, that's amazing, dude. On the anniversary. Yeah. That's uh, uh Davis Kimbo. Sorry. No, I just gonna say like people uh ten years. Maybe the unmarried person doesn't know, but to make it ten years that's that a jab at me. <laughs> 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 yes, You've relationships take work and they're fantastic. Yeah. Uh when you got the right person. Um truly. Yeah. Steve dealing with some major challenges career wise. About to make a huge change, lots of stress and mental health challenges, but healthy family, great crew, the TNL fam, and I'm going fishing on the boat tomorrow and Saturday. Life is good. Steve, we appreciate, uh, because not everything is awesome and super positive, but when we turn it around and we have gratitude for the things that we do have, which is what Steve did there. Um, yeah. What's up? What's up, brother? Um, do, do, do. Watched you and Rob last night and uh, setting up your overlays. So that's pretty cool. Can't wait to see uh, what you guys have thrown together. 
Adrian's got some projects done around the house and some quality time with the kiddo. Good times. Tom, what do you got here? Does wonders for my mental health and is a great primer for the weekend. Yeah. That is so awesome to hear. You got this one, Tim? Yeah, it's like Vince got, he, uh, his win was he received from this Pfizer vaccine. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. It's great. Joel, went and explored an area I've never been to and caught a bunch of little brookies. Beautiful place and beautiful fish. They win. Matt, you got this one, Tim? Yeah, Matt says, today is my son's first birthday. He started his life with COVID and is still in COVID times. <laughs> Helps me focus on the good times in the last year and how tough it has yeah. been. Awesome. Yes, Novlan. Thanks for an awesome Thursday, boys. Love this night and it was good to tune in. After the last couple weeks having to work. Yes, Craig Jones. <laughs> when of course is Thursday, but also had an amazing week of work with our new students in his Hunter Ed class. Nice. Super pumped. LPCF. LPCF. Love it, buddy. <laughs> Love people. Jim said fish. his waiter shrunk today, but <laughs> Jim was the reason we put water on the baking cam because he grew. <laughs> he grew. <laughs> COVID-47, Jim. Jim grew as much as his anniversary. <laughs> 42 pounds. <laughs> it's your love. It's your full uh, love, Jim. You got to let so some out. Love. You got to let it go. Yeah. Patty Poirier. Keegan. Oh, Keegan is the outrider. Oh, Keegan yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 Um, do you know Rio King? One of my really good buddies. You would. I guarantee he does. <laughs> and he's going to have some good stories. <laughs> That is a interesting human. Yeah. Okay. Being in the land of the living is my win. Mr. Yeah. Riley for the win. Yes. Mr. Riley. Doug, uh, your wife got her second vaccination this week. Super awesome. Yeah. Okay. Where are we at? We're a little behind after a recent experience. I'm very thankful for paramedics like Tim and the job that they do. Wes. It's Friday. Two full days of fishing in my near future. Oof. In the Yeah, he boat. messaged me and asked me a couple questions. He said he's got some stuff he sent us, so. Oh, for the know. giveaway? No, I think for you and me. Oh, my. Mr. Wes. Look what an me. artist he is. Yeah, it's something special. Wins for the win. Okay, here's a big one. All right. My win, I've been on here every Thursday night and enjoying time. My win is I sit with my wife every Thursday in Thai while she preps her college class lessons online. We share a day and she shares laughs and makes up names for what I'm tying. This has been a tough time for us as for everyone, but for Thursday Night Live has made a great 17 weeks in more ways than the two of you could ever know. Thank you both. Next week is her birthday and I hope you could give her a shout out next week. 1000%. 100%. Um, that's well, the stuff the kids think of. I know, it's like, jeez. It's everything. Here, you don't even know what that means to us to hear that. Like, Yeah. The, um, they're called whispers in life. And uh, not everybody hears them because they're too noisy and they don't, they're not in tune with things. And just hear me out. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, but if you can silence a lot of the noise in your life, you're going to start to hear the whispers. And I'm telling you guys, the Thursday Night Live was a whisper that we had three years ago. Uh, we still don't know where it's going. We still don't know what we're doing. We still don't even know what flies for time <laughs> some of the some of the time. Um, but it's just one of those things that I had just a little tug on my heartstrings. Uh, as well as almost four years ago, the the season that didn't go anywhere. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a whisper and it's, I'm telling you, Jeff, there's something bigger than us and it's not, I, you know, we're holding the space here, but without you guys, we say this over and over again, but that stuff right there, um, all the work that goes into Thursday Night Live and there's a lot of work that goes into it. It just, that comment right there is, it, that's, mad, that's, uh, appreciate it. A hundred thousand percent. So Tune out some of the noise. I wrote a post about it on Instagram today because it's a fact. It's like only quality people and the uh, the the people who aren't quality people, they will 
be your noise and we have to eliminate those and i'm not saying cut people out of your life but it's just like tune your focus somewhere else and it starts to magically happen and it becomes really freaking cool uh barry relieved that the grandkids finally got to return to school you're stuck in the house for 24 days of quarantine long time yeah the whisper is a roar <laughs> huh ain't that the truth Mark, here's a good one. Also, one of my wins was getting to have a beer with Mark on Saturday. Uh, was getting to do TNL and all the things I love. It was amazing to be a part of what Trax Pub has been doing, and it gave me a great energy and perspective to look ahead with. Just feeling grateful. Thanks, fellas, for doing what you do. Thank you, Mark. Genuine, authentic human right there, folks. Um, I wanted more time with you, and we will do that. Yeah. Steve so grateful for you all especially dana and tim for all you do take care stay healthy and see you all next thursday cheers yeah, all right keegan cheers you, you do know rio king even if you have bad service <laughs> it's a fact yeah uh, um i can say this because i know it's true You're a good i'm man, uncomfortable dana. you have a great heart you only knew it's yeah. it is the people it's the people folks um, so James Riley, guys, here's a great story. Uh, hard work pays off. So uh, James and I, Mr. Riley, we met through uh, a group of people who do some live streaming. Has absolutely zero to do with fishing. Like I don't, Mr. Riley, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you've ever held a fly rod. Uh, I believe that to be true. Uh, but he he he's here tuning in because it's only quality people. And it doesn't matter what the show is about. It matters the fact that quality people attract quality people. And uh, Mr. Riley is a pretty rad dude. And to have awesome people like that just tuning in here because of the group of people sharing the positive energy, there's Special. the magic. Special. OQP. There it is. <laughs> All right, you read Michelle's. All right, Michelle. My win this week was receiving some kind words of support from some top-notch co-workers because work has been hellish lately. Um, meant more than they know. Sometimes it's just a couple words can change one's perspective. Yeah. And it is something special it's, to hold. It's the whispers you get. Uh, you want to text somebody and say thank you or you want to text somebody and say thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I love you. Keep your... Chaz, that's the guy. He sends us, like, it's... Yeah. It's All right. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Great yes. evening of like-minded people. Donna Smith. Our local CSA farm is offering shares of flowers each week, and my husband got me a share for my birthday. 18 weeks of flowers will remind me how much he loves me. Huh. Thanks for a fun night, guys. So cool. Well, yes, we've taken is. up two and a twelve minutes, two hours and twelve minutes of your Thursday. Um, not one second does it feel like time it just goes what quick, is, just like time? the season. Yeah. Time. So we hate this part because <laughs> we, we do kind of gotta go. No, you oh, said. You, you said. I love you more. <laughs> I love you more. <laughs> yes, this is uh, this is the fact. Chaz is awesome. I, Somebody who could literally turn around to the world and throw up the middle finger and say, you know, I have no reason, like, just, fin like, it's inspiring. And we showed his video here a month or so ago. Um, yeah. Be awesome. Keep being awesome. Yeah. Listen to those whispers. If something's tugging on your heartstring, explore it. Tune out the noise. You cannot hear whispers when the noise is noisy and the people in your life are noisy. So fine tune that stuff, get in tune with it because uh, here we are four years later. I know it's season three, but we started a year before and um, uh, here we are, here we are. Yeah, here we are. And what's exciting is almost not knowing what's coming because we just know it's going to get better. Yeah. And you guys will be here for all of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Dana. I'm Tim. Love you guys. We'll Love see you. you next Thursday. Cheers.